friends. Nothing to Elysium. It has been a week or so since our last session. Strapped back to the work desk as I leave. So it has been far too long to be kept. And I already forget her name. I want to say Stella? Th that doesn't sound right. into her church and messed with her radio computer. Let us uh, formally introduce ourselves, shall we? Hi, Kim. I love you. Thank you for showing me your backside, I guess. What is it? Soon, uh, That's right. I wasn't even close. Um, the woman is hunched over the keyboard, gently illuminated by the Purring machine. That's a good machine. I didn't break anything, did I? That's probably a good question to ask. Hey, are you the lead programmer of the Wirral Untethered, by any chance? Sorry, but who are you? What are you doing here? <laughs> it seems really more of an appropriate question for her to ask me. I didn't break anything, did I? No, you just printed out my personal log and wasted some paper. It does not look like a big loss to her. Whew. Uh, are you by any chance the lead programmer of Wirral? Yes. Or, no. Not anymore. That project is dead. I wish it wasn't. It sounded amazing. Is there any way that I can help? I have $24. And you're welcome to roughly 69 cents of it, because I'm going to need that money. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have mentioned it. She doesn't it. seem surprised to be recognized. Rather sad. Something passes over her face before she straightens her back. Hmm. Um, this seems so rude to ask, but it's my final dialogue option. Hey there, uh, who, who, who are you? I just asked. I just asked her, and she told me. What are you doing here? I am Sona Luukkanen Kilde, the former lead programmer of Fortress Accident and RSA radios. I have over 16 years of programming experience, and I'm proficient in both Vox and Orbis languages. Hot damn. What a fantastic name that is. Suna Lukhanen Kilda? Delicious mouthful. Kim, uh, speaking of a delicious mouthful, would you, you like to go out with me? Never mind. If you're mind. not here to hire me, I don't really know how I can help you. Maybe I am here to hire you. Have you seen The Crab Man? That sounds like a hit song from the 60s. Have you seen The Crab Man? Why are there so many machines in this place? What are you doing in an abandoned church? And how do you feel about a nautic dance music? <laughs> the Crab Man was very generous. He was like, yeah, they can rave in here. I'm not entirely sure if um, Suna is going to feel the same. Have you seen the Crab Man? No. Nope. Okay. Uh, but you do know that he's around, yes. right? Yes. Oh, good. He's definitely seen you. <laughs> it sounds like you're not worried about him no. at all. You're right. I'm not. I love her. Uh, her voice trails off as she bends over to tinker with the machine's printer. Why are there so many machines in this place? I brought them here. These are my machines. Please don't touch anything. Oh, sure. Uh, why do you need an antenna? Probably for radio signals, but w why? I use the AR-1 as my RAIN Prefect processing unit. Uh, what? RAIN Prefect. My radio computer. And that antenna is its processing unit? Yes. You really don't know anything about radio computers, do you? She has stopped working now. Somehow it seems to be your fault. I really don't. I, I don't know much about anything in this world, to be honest. Yeah, let's let Sune into the inner circle of all trust. Right. Well, all radio computers perform operations up on air. So in order to gain more processing power, you need to invest in a good antenna. And what's on air? On the front. The unified front of radio waves, licensed and controlled by Lintel in the east in Selindic region. It's all around us. That's what on-air means. Is it, uh, damaging 
to my perfect baby smooth skin. Like love. Oh. Conceptualization. You've you've shattered me with this with this observation. Uh is it a good antenna? I guess it is. So far I've been quite satisfied with it. Martinez is an unstable region with bad coverage, and the operation has been surprisingly stable. Hmm. Must be a great antenna, but then. But it's not the cheapest one on the market. So I wouldn't recommend it for your regular red tape operations. Fraser 1000 is a foolproof line for civilians. Anyway, you should do some research before you decide to buy anything. Ask around, compare the prices. There are many milieus dedicated to that sort of thing. She liked telling me this. It calmed her nerves. Aww, I'm so proud. Uh, what are you doing with your radio computer? I'm working. Mm, sorry about the that. The machine seems almost alien with its pulsing core. The light casts in her face in a strange shadow. What are you... what are you working on? Could you... could you just... shh... for a moment? <laughs> or get to the point. I really need to focus on something. I feel like she really wanted to turn around and shout, SHUT THE F but she didn't, and I'm, I'm proud of her for that. Uh, so what about those bowls of water over there? I'm really sorry to interrupt. They are connected to my rain prefect. Whatever you do, just please don't move them, okay? Thanks. I wouldn't dream of it. I might get my cloak all soggy. Short and terse. There you have it. Whatever she's using them for, they're hers. Right, I'll try not to touch anything. Oh, hello, hello. Nice to see you guys there. Sorry, I was lost in Suna's, I, I guess, back. I wanted to say eyes, but I have not seen her eyes. I'll try not to touch anything, thank Great. you. Great. It is a pleasure to see you guys there. Good morning, indeed. What are you doing in an abandoned church? You really like those questions, don't you? Mm-hmm. I'm questions, cop. There's a hint of amusement in her tired eyes. I'm a police officer. It's kind of my job. Well, you're occupying a public space. I need to know. There have been complaints from your neighbors. No, I'm just a police officer. It's my job to ask questions. I'm conducting scientific research here. You can't throw me out. She says, ready to stand her ground. I wouldn't dream of throwing you out, but tell me, do you like anodic dance music? What is your research? I'm looking for the location of a two-millimeter hole in the world. Hmm. Well, you've piqued my interest. Wait, what? She's looking for a disruption in the radio waves. That's what her personal log said. Tomato, tomato. The lieutenant raises his brows, but doesn't say anything. Is this hole connected to the data loss you mentioned in your journal, which I did read, by the way. I pried it open. Yes, that's what led me here. But I suspect it might be something a bit more complicated than that. What does that mean, exactly? Exactly. What does it mean? Up to now, it has been impossible to say what it is, because it's impossible to measure nothing. What a delicious little mystery exists in this church. I'm titillated. What do you think it is? What qualities does nothing have? How do you measure something that does not exist? She's suddenly absorbed in the conversation, waiting for your answer. That's a little above your pay grade at the moment. <laughs> I'm just I'm just learning what like school and books are on a basic fundamental level, but let me give you my, my two cents. Hold on a moment. Does it mean we're now living in a world that has holes in it like a delicious slice of Swiss cheese? I can't even understand how we're talking about something that doesn't exist, let alone measure it. I... I don't know. I'm, I'm not here for science. I just want to solve a murder so I can go home. No, I'm definitely here for the science. Does that mean we're living in a world that has holes in it? I don't know. Are we? That's what I'm trying to figure out here. But how do I figure it out? I can't even understand how we're talking about it. it by its surroundings. By that which does exist. Which is what I've been trying to do. I've tried using hydro transducers to record the silence. To find out where it begins. But honestly, it's not progressing very well. Hydro transducers is a much cooler word for several bowls of water. She grows silent, 
staring at her circle of basins. It looks like some ancient ritual. What does it have anything to do with necroplasmic life forms? Ghosts in everyday parlance. I'm gonna have to ask, does it have anything to do with ghosts? Ghosts? No, I don't yeah. think so. I don't believe in ghosts. What about other supernatural entities? Entities? What's wrong with me? Right then, nothing to do with ghosts. <laughs> Nothing to do with ghosts in my ledger. What about other supernatural entities? I don't believe in them either. Oh, good. What uh, not many know is necroplasma exists. <sighs> Again, I. every time I have an option like this, I want to take the wild conspiratorial path, because just... Will that make it real? Will I manifest ghosts into the world? I mean, that just sounds exciting as hell. Not to mention all the free ectoplasm we're going to collect. Uh, necroplasma exists. In my Great. view. Wait, what are we talking about? And why? <laughs> it's a clear signal that this branch of conversation is over. She is not interested in Crab Man or the ghosts. Do you have any idea where this hole might be located? Somewhere underneath those roof beams, I assume. She looks up, eyes trying to pierce the pitch-black heights above, but without much success, as Crabman is mooning us. Only a faint crisscross of rafters can be made out from the dark, most of the tower disappearing into the shade. Strange things may flourish in the dark. Let me add them. There's this place at the back of the church, a place where all audible vibrations seem to decease. I've named it the Swallow. And the higher you go, the less you record. The Pillar of Silence? Are you sure it's not just an architectural quirk? Maybe, but it's oddly close to the physical coordinates of the data loss that led me to this place. Why, this is where Crab Man lives. Crab Man and the Ghosts, the hippest new anodic dance group out of Martinez. I would totally go to that concert and quietly sit in the back. Wrapped in a blanket. I know. Uh, you don't think Crab Man might be somehow responsible here? No, I don't. Mm, sure. Sure, I'm starting to think that maybe you're just excited at the sight of his butt cheeks and don't want to apply blame to him. But that's just a, a theory I'm writing down in my ledger. It's not important. She sounds mildly annoyed by this line of questioning. Her hands typing hundreds of commands into the machine. You said that the research isn't going well. May I ask why? Because it's just trial and error. Trying to locate the swallow, the exact point in space. And I don't have a... You know what? It would be really helpful if you could just stop talking and let me work. Okay. That's all I wanted to know about the terrifying two millimeter hole in the world. For now. Great. Thanks. Uh, hey, about that two millimeter hole again. <laughs> <laughs> We're back in, baby. So, how do you feel about a nautic dance music? I'm guessing if my soft, melodic, gentlemanly, lamb-chopped questions are this big of an imposition to her, a nautic dance music is going to be a, a big um, confrontation. But how do you feel about it? Maybe she's a big fan. What? I hate it. I figured as much. I bet she hasn't even heard it. Have you even listened to it? Like, actually listened? Have you let it consume you on the dance floor? What are you, 40? It's the future of dance music! <laughs> oh, same here. It just doesn't connect in my heart like disco does. Okay, wow. That was quick. Why, why do you hate it? Why do you Maybe hate it? Maybe I'd have to be on drugs to get it, but to a sober mind it just sounds like uninspired rock whipping. No idea what it has to do with either dancing or music. Okay, but hear me out. How do you feel about a club for anodic dance music here that will effectively um, fill the church with sound at all times, making it impossible for you to work? This is about those speed freaks in the tent, isn't it? I've got some news for you. It's not a nightclub they want to build here. It's a sex club. I knew it! I knew Egghead was looking at me sidelong with naught but passion. Uh, what do they want to build, then? Take a guess, why don't you? 
I just did. A petting zoo, perhaps? A youth center would be nice for the youths. Maybe some community space to help the elderly. I'm, I'm still, I'm pretty convinced they want to establish a nightclub for anotic dance music. They said that it's their dream. I can't believe they got you so easily. Go have another talk with those up-and-coming entrepreneurs, will you? Thanks. I will. And I'm gonna ask if they're into drug trafficking. Good luck. I'm not coming in there. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair, Lieutenant. Uh, I'll let you work in peace now. Thank you for your time, Suna. I, I really appreciate you, and you're back. All right. Back into my old habits of quick saving at every five to ten seconds. What is back here? What is this? In white, silver, and apricot fields, the young mother of humanism stands above you. A crack runs across her body. She is impossibly tall, oval faced, and sad. A dark and radiant majesty. Mm, these descriptions, they are so awesome. Did you say not but passion regarding Egghead, or hot but passion? Because I'm going to assume it's the first one, because the second one's just silly. It was the first one, but now I'm regretting my choices. I, I really wish I'd floated the idea of hot but passion past Egghead while I was in the tent. This is her innocence, Dolores Day. Hello, your innocence. Cradled in her arms are a pair of glowing lungs clearly visible from underneath her flowing dress. You should Are kneel. they underneath? Oh, sorry, I, I will. Are they underneath her flowing dress, or are, are they cradled in her arms? I'm a, I'm a little confused. Kneel. Your knees touch the floor. The floorboards are hard and cold. There, you kneel among the snowdrifts, diffuse light falling on your hands from beyond the glass. I'm going to close my eyes first. Really... Really just take it in. What do I feel in this most sacred space? The world is silent, but for the creaks and cracks of the massive wooden structure behind you, it covers you from the wind outside. The ocean feels distant, its ebb and flow blocked off by the centuries-old pinewood sarcophagus around you. In the darkness, you sense her eyes on you, inspecting you with their multicolored glass, as if you're a bug under a microscope. Open your eyes. The woman Sorry, looks down at you kneeling. She towers among her followers, architects, laymen, courtiers. There is a sad smile on her lips and a glint in her green-blue eye of what? Compassion? Remorse? Why, that's the glint of humanism. She acknowledges the passing of someone who is still alive. You. What? It's not possible to live. When I, we were, I've learned my lesson about how very, very little morale I possess. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop letting my mind go to these sorts of places. It, um, it's, it's compassion. From what I can actually see of her, she looks sort of quietly content and not really remorseful or in mourning. But I guess you can be quietly content while you're in mourning, especially if it was. Your nemesis that passed. Um, I'm going to be optimistic. It's compassion in her eyes. As that soft word passes through your mind, the lieutenant draws an X-shaped cross from shoulder to shoulder. Hmm. We've learned a little something about Lieutenant Kim. Uh, do the same. When in Rome... Your fingertips touch your chest four times. Then you rise from your knees into the apricot-colored light of the window. Above you, the woman still smiles her distant smile, sundered by the crack in the glass. Due to the dry conditions of the Martinez winter, your fingertips themselves are quite chapped and crackly, and so as you draw the sign of the X across your chest, you, you rub one of your nipples quite raw, and you have one point of health remaining. This is Dolores Day. Encyclopedia, 72% chance. How did I know this is the mother of humanism? Good question. 42% uh, chance, reconstruct the cracked glass. Mm. 
This is Dolores' day. The old woman in the village was right. This must be the Dolorean Church of Humanity in Martinez, or the small Pinewood Church in some records. You knew of the place? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachol's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first-generation settlers. On the coast of an uninhabited archipelago, where only animals had roamed before, in the wild reeds. Okie dokie. <laughs> uh, what else do you know? There used to be seven stiff churches on the coast. Les Setsa, they called them. The Seven Sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. It really does kind of change the whole dynamic of uh, helping some teens open a dance club in here. It's, it's the final remaining of the Seven Sisters and a place of great joy to Lieutenant Kim, it seems. Or reverence, at the very least. We should be respectful here. Although the building appears to be deserted, I do not believe we'll find anything connected to the lynching here. Something else, perhaps? Mm, something else to tell. He looks at the machinery lying around. Respectful? Is the lieutenant a follower of DeLoreanism? I don't know if he can even get up to 88 miles per hour. There it is again. A small pang of guilt. It's time to ask him what happened here. Better to not intrude upon him. Now, do you know why it was abandoned? I'm intruding upon you. I have a theory, yes. There was a police raid a while back. I heard the place was shut to pieces. It's not the only thing I want to do upon you. Sorry, what? What did you say? Why did the police shoot this reverent place to pieces? Are we the bad guys? I'm beginning to suspect. <sighs> no, we knew the all. The old woman in the village was being tactful with us when she didn't mention it. She has more respect for the RCM than many around here. Who conducted this raid, and where can I find them for some light uh, torture? Well, your station was involved, I hear. Although I can be sure. <laughs> that, uh, that came back around. How come the lieutenant isn't sure? Is this confidential information? You're not sure? Three precincts were involved in the raid, and people say Precinct 41 was one of them. Hmm. I guess I could have been here. It does bear the telltale signs of the destruction that I leave in my wake wherever I go. But I don't remember being here. <sighs> I am pretty sure it was a clandestine operation. I don't know anything more about it, why it was conducted, or who participated. I try not to pry into extra-district matters. If I was here, I should found I should found out, <clears throat> find out what I was doing. Good luck. You will not get information on a confidential operation from your station secretary just by calling. If you really don't remember, it might be better to keep this one forgotten. I don't think he's implying that he doesn't believe me that I don't remember, but. It, there's, there's an implication there that I can't quite get my cracked uh, nipple-rubbing fingertips on. It happened on. a while ago. It's an important to our business in Martinez now. Kim, I'm just gonna... I'm, I'm gonna come right out and ask it, and you let me know if this is in bad taste. Are you a follower of DeLoreanism? Yes, we all are. Her name, body, and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are DeLorean in origin. Hmm... Stroke your chin first, before he gets the chance to. Uh, I didn't think you were spiritual. I don't like her. She looks like a lever. <laughs> what does that mean, Harry? Uh, stroke your chin. Sure, why not? I'm itchy. The woman looks by in silence, smiling enigmatically. It's not that I didn't think you were spiritual. I, ju I just didn't know. I didn't know you were spiritual. It's not spiritual. It's constitutional. The DeLorean system does not demand faith. Only accordance. Hmm. These are both white checks. Let's try for the 72% without quick saving it, though that may be a hideous mistake. We, we may regret this deeply. I'm living on the edge. The edge of the swallow. It's a mystery. Oh, a mystery I sprinkled with self-pity and regret. For some reason, 
unknown to your mind. Looking at her delicate eyes makes you feel like you're ready for drowning. Mm, I'm drowning in those eyes. Pull me back, Kim. Send me a life preserver. Or just some lifesavers if you have them. I'm a bit peckish. All you know is, this is the oh, damage of mind. humanity, and that you should go. Do something else. Escape her sad, worry-worn look. I really should have quicksaved it before I tried that. I'm, I'm desperately close to death. Or at least losing my mind and living under a bridge as hobo cop for all time. Uh, 42% chance for this one. Does not seem better. I turn away to leave, desperately wishing I had done so before. Such is life. Sometimes you stumble upon something that damages your morale, and you don't get to fall back to an earlier save. Alright, we swept the church. It came from the stained glass window. Still has letters on it, too. I, I don't remember what that was in reference to. Was there like a rock or something we found over here? Chucked through the glass? Possibly by me in a former life. Alright, doesn't seem like I can do much else here. I will need to increase my encyclopedic knowledge in order to try that other check again. We could try the 42 now that we're cheesing it with quick saves. Why not? The mother three of tries exactly and then move on. A precious and complex wax painting on a single pane of glass. A crack runs across the length of her body, her face oval and sad. Interesting that uh, we found the exact piece that gives us help in reconstructing this while I was just dicking around over there. Okay, 58% uh, now, even better. I should then, of course, save it further for these boosted odds. Are there any other shards? with her bowls of water, and then I ran headlong right for them. My clonky boots, just a travesty in her eyes. All right, 58% then. The mother of humanism stands above you, a pressure the shards glimmer in the dark. Uh, oh, my, my morale is so damaged. So damaged and sad. Try number two. The mother of humanism stands above you. A precious the shards glimmer. Ouch. And try number three. Third times the shards, as they the say. The mother of humanism stands above you. A precious shards glimmer in the dark. Third times you without the shards. All right, that's fine. That's fine. We're moving on. To return later to retry my encyclopedia check anyway. So, let us, um, discuss what the actual plan for the church here is, uh, with the teen ravers. Of all the teen ravers, I perhaps trust, um, the woman on the shoreline to be most truthful with us. With us. I cannot pronounce things today. Just go across this bridge. This has been worked so hard to create it. Oh, hey. Hello again. A cell. I remember now. 58 per chance. Per chance? Wow, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna go back to bed. A 58 per chance of getting uh, that one. My empathy is at 7, which makes me proud. I'm proud of myself for that. All right, she has nothing to do with the ongoing plan. Hello, boys. Canisters filled with what appears to be water. The label says distilled. Speaker, the big kind. Hi hey. again. So, uh, how are things going? Mm. Suna said something's amiss. That gives us another small bonus to our logic. I love that mechanic of your exploration in the world helping your chances of various things. It's so 
engaging. So, about the church, I checked it and out. What happened? I talked to the crab man. Clickety clackety, we said to each other. Oh man! Who is he? What did you think? His butt cheeks are gorgeous, but I didn't really pick up much else. He seemed okay, to be honest. He's very spiritual, very nude. He gave me this odd lecture on alcoholism before rambling on and on about the mother's love. You were right. He's a narcomaniac, and the way he climbs, whew, it was terrifying and a little bit arousing. He seemed okay, to be honest. He, he was not hurting nobody. He did give me an odd lecture and rambled about the mother's love, but he seemed fine. Really? Huh. Interesting. What's he doing in the church? There's something sinister going on under the building's roof. I think he's getting high. I'm not sure if I really want to let the rave teens in on the knowledge of the pale. Or whatever it is, the paler of silence. He's just preaching and praying. No matter. Is he going to be a problem? Mm, unless you hate gorgeous butt yeah. cheeks. Noid is right. Let's get back to the point. What are we going to do about him? Leave him in peace. These guys will never catch him. You will never catch him. There's nothing to do. Of course he's a problem. He's a crab man. <laughs> it's very rude towards the crab man population. He keeps himself physically active. He thinks spiritual thoughts and doesn't drink. Who am I to evict such a person? As far as I can tell, he's not going to leave. He'll climb around up there and, guys, you'll never catch him. I, I think, um, if anything, he'll just be a bit of a draw to your club. But speaking of the club, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to put the kibosh on it because there's serious scientific research going on in there. He told me he wouldn't mind the nightclub at all. He likes a bit of the dance. I don't know, man. Doesn't it feel like a major hindrance to you? A spooky guy climbing around when all the guests are trying to have nice friendly hyper time? It almost seems as though you're worried about something beyond the dance club. You're just gonna have to live with Crab Man. Don't worry, I don't think he really gives a damn about you or anyone else. But you specifically, I think. You're just gonna have to live with I him. guess it's not a massive problem now that I think of it. Right? Everyone is welcome to dance till the morning light! Yeah! Oof, he will be shaking it from the rafters. Maybe. Uh, I guess we'll figure something out. Okay, but what about the other spooker? The one in Grandma's clothes? Did you see her? I thought she was dressed rather fashionably myself. Um, that's sooner. She's much, much smarter than all of us in this tent combined right now, and if it comes down to it, we're gonna have to respect her wishes. A programmer? That's odd. What was she like? Did you ask her about the nightclub? Well, she said, but you guys haven't been completely honest with me about your plans. I don't really want to make that, like, her her problem. I just want to be like, hey, I feel as though you haven't been completely honest with me about your plans. I don't want them to be like, oh, well, let's go beat her in the streets. No, not that these nice, innocent drug drug dealing boys would do such a thing. I don't know. Uh, she did not like the anotic dance club idea. More importantly, she said you haven't been completely honest with me. Come on, man! Who will you trust? A spooky programmer or us? We just want to make the world a better place. Definitely the programmer. Feel the love! Get down and feel it! <laughs> Stuffy tent muffles the last two words. The command fails to impress. Get down and... <laughs> a half-hearted sell of something which does not seem worth buying. Okay, maybe I'm kind of feeling it. I don't know if this is like a, I am on your side and I agree to help, or if this is just trying to boost up my man Egghead over there, because I'd, I'd be happy to do that. The love, no, no, I'm not really feeling it at all. What I am feeling is the compassion from our Reverend Mother Dolores Day. You'll get there, believe me. When we've got our gear set up, Things will be flowing and pumping. Mm, TMI. Anyway, now that it's settled, how did she seem? 
I mean, disposition-wise. About the dance club idea. Yeah, Oda 9. Rocking it or dropping it? Well, she said... She said you guys haven't been completely honest with me, and you you did a masterful job of skirting the issue and, and making me look like a fool. <laughs> she did not like the dance club idea. She has important scientific work to do. What a pity! That's my favorite thing in the world! And she doesn't like it at all! He drops a hammer back into the toolbox. Is that a threat, Noid? A shame. What can we do now? Do you see a way out of this jam? And into a laser-lit future of dance and unity? There's this place called the Doomed Commercial Area. It's not being used. Uh, there's a small gym... gym area that, yeah, I mean, you're not gonna bother anyone if you set up your laser lights in there. And we will pump till the break of dawn, together. In the middle of town, where it will be easier to advertise, instead of across the river in this ghostly wasteland. Come with me. Come with me to the center of Martinez, and we will live together in the future of anodic dance. But we will be leaving sooner the programmer alone. So Unity! Dance! She made it very clear that she won't leave until her own project is finished. And you can't just evict her? No. I can, but I will not evict her. We have to come up with a different solution. Look at you, honor man! That's me. Three fingers raised to the sky. No, Noid. He's right. Maybe we've approached it the wrong way after all. I'm sure there's a workaround. We can make a deal not to bother her. But uh, the truth of what you're actually doing here, it's, it's important to me personally. I don't feel like personally slighted, like you've misled me or lied to me. I'm just insatiably curious. If that's okay with her, we only want to get in the church and spread the joy and ecstasy of music. The lines in the dark exist, coexist. At least Crabman seems like an advanced being. He's odd. He'll understand. From what I saw of him, he was, he was definitely hard. So. Yeah, he can do his climbing thing in the tower. And the programmer, does she like anodic dance music? She absolutely does not. Really, really, truly despises it. She thinks it's just noise. Rug whipping, I believe she said. I'm not sure if that's like a saucy euphemism for something. Egghead cannot believe what she just said. <laughs> it makes him pump the jam a little slower for a moment. But then oh. he returns to the full swing of it. I've broken his little heart. No worries. We'll figure it out. If coexisting fails, you can always muscle her out, right? If it's all okay with you... What do you think? I refuse to throw her out. I can try convincing her. All right, I'll see how it goes with muscling her out. I think not only is she smarter than all four of us in the tent, she can certainly kick my ass from from the way that she seems to tolerate no bullshit in her daily life. I refuse to throw her out. I will talk to her again and use my encyclopedic knowledge for Excellent. good. Excellent. Good luck, my friend. confronted him about Suna's hint. I did not seem to raise my chances at all. But good to know. Goodbye, officer. That's it for now. I will be learning your secrets. Tell me your secrets. Hi again. My godly so, uh, intuition. How things going? A number of things don't add up. Let's take a look. Here we go. We're taking a look. Egghead, you want in on this? How about gather around, kids? Okay, kiddos, gather around. Pop Pop's got some news for you. Uh, things don't add up. Let's let's not let's not call them kids. I've got bad news for you, Andre. Things are not clicking. What things? He senses something is wrong. Sooner said you've been lying about your plans, and your answer was very unconvincing slash non-existent. You are sober. Was it hard for you to keep sober for this meeting? Ooh, sticking it to him. This isn't the makings of a club. It's a tent full of laboratory equipment for manufacturing drugs. Let's slow burn it just a bit. Hey, you're sober. You're a young man, out in the middle of nowhere in a tent. 
presumably full of drugs. Why aren't you? Why aren't you high as balls? We don't need drugs to be hardcore. You just need drugs to sell. I see. Shut the fuck up, Egg. Oh hey, you don't talk to Egghead that way. Maybe not today, Egg, but you need drugs to get through the days when you're not expecting me. The bottom line is, I know. Uh, let's go here. Climb down from the equestrian monument, cop man. Consciousness <laughs> is new to the universe. We all have our ways to ease the shock. It is. The equestrian monument he's mentioning is one of the highest horses I've seen. Great phrase. Great phrase. Bottom line is, I know, guys. So let us drop the facade. This facade of yours, all of the lies, that's not very hardcore. What exactly is it you know? Um, this is what I know. We'll leave Suna out of it. You have a bunch of laboratory equipment in here for making drugs. I have no idea how you arrived at that conclusion, but it's wrong. Look, we even have speakers. You do have speakers. That's, that's true. I'm questioning everything one now. One speaker. They have one speaker. Uh, where is his friend? Did he lose his friend? I have no headphones. Wouldn't a cell need her headphones to spin them tapes? What Nosefet is here for? So sorry. That got a crickle cracklin'. It's all part of the uh, anodic dance experience. I forgot how to speak. The ether in the air. A useful solvent. Good for getting acting agent out of a solution. My chemical knowledge is quite impressive, it seems. Um... Can I, can I confront them with all of this? Or do I have to pick only one? Because if it's only one, I think the ether is, is a good bet. Start Make here. up your mind. First is the sweat, then it's the ether. He smiles nervously. Why are you so nervous, Andre? The nose of it is here for its active he ingredient. Said it was for his nose. What more do you want? Likely pseudoephedrine. Almost exactly the shape of ephedrine. Ephedrine makes you happy, and so does pseudoephedrine. Where is this uh, friend of yours who I I seem to have forgotten about in the what last week? What do you week? mean, friend? Oh, the other speaker. You have only one. It's a one-speaker system. It's monodynamic. You wouldn't know the first thing about sound reproduction in anodic music. Other speaker. <sighs> it's a big church. You're, you're gonna need more than one speaker. This may be the brain damage talking, but you've definitely never heard of monodynamic or one-speaker systems. That is something we do not tolerate in the world of disco. You have no headphones. Wouldn't a cell need her headphones to spin what tape? What do you know about spinning tape? Nothing! Well, I know that you ponder them. Likely for lab equipment and drug ingredients. Poke him in the chest! I'm sorry, but there is no lab equipment and no drug ingredients. And you won't mind ripping off that uh, small sheet behind you. Not your pants. Not stop. Stop what you're doing. The one behind you. There is no need for me to pile on anymore, no is there? No shit. He sounds tired. Good. <laughs> Everyone is so bigoted against us. We simply want to commit a bunch of dangerous crimes and spill super fun level toxic waste after making us super illegal drugs. People can be so judgmental sometimes. Uh, so in short, you tried to use a police detective to set up a drug lab. That's... come on, that's... Preposterous, is it? Or is it punishable by summary execution? Kim, get in here with your sidearm. We're gonna cap these fools. Start with, uh, Noid, because I think he's holding something behind his back. That's quite dangerous. Leave Egghead for last, because I like him, and maybe he'll repent and become a junior detective on the force. That's preposterous. That's against the law. I don't know if it's punishable by summary execution, but that would probably put them in their place. Let's say against the law. 
I meant to say, not true. Oh, is that what you meant to say? So what are we going to do with you? Hmm? Clap you in irons? Put you onto my skillet like a delicious flapjack? What do you mean, do? Rest you, I guess. Or you could just, you could just donate the drugs to me, and then we can all forget There's about this. There's resignation in his voice. He's almost ready to drop the act. It wouldn't take a lot of pushing. Well, let's start pushing. We do this lawman style. First, you tell me everything, and then I pass judgment. You tell me what's really going on, and we'll work from there. I can be lenient. That's fair. I don't really care. I just wanted to crack the case. Do what you want. <laughs> uh, just tell me what's going what on. What do you mean by lenient? I'm not calling back up and hauling your ass off to the pen, for starters. Haven't you heard? I'm the dirtiest cop this side of the river. To be honest, both sides of the river, I'm probably still in contention. I'll make life hard for you using Crab Man. I mean, using every connection I've got. We'll see. Now speak. Like a puppy. That seems rude. Uh, I'm not gonna call back up and haul you off to the pen. For starters. Start there. Some appetizers. Okay, man. Okay. He raises his hands. High five him. Things are just so, so hard for an entrepreneur in this city right now. It's not like we lied when we said we want to turn a church into the wickedest club in East Revershaw. Because we do! We totally do! I totally we believe just you. We need to turn it into a speed lab before. To raise initial funds. To get our foot in the door. Sure. And uh, why did you need like me? Like I told you, spooky arseholes moved in while I was getting all this stuff together. A month ago, the place was empty, and now it's all spooked up. They're not really spooky or assholes, for that matter, though, are no, they? No, man. They're spooky, all right. It's just that they would also probably call the police if we started cooking speed in there. I mean, yeah, probably. Crab Man might have been cool with it. I don't but know. The sign was way off, too. I couldn't feel the love at all. You get over here, Egghead, and I'll show you the love. Sir, you promised you'd be lenient. I didn't promise. I said I can be. This is it. Judgment time. Give me your cash. We're not going to ask for a bribe. Especially not with Lieutenant Kim right outside. He, the look in his little puppy dog eyes of disappointment in us. I couldn't, I couldn't bear it. Pack up and report to Precinct 41. It's a resting time. Get lost. I don't want to see you again. Let's do this clean. No speed lab. Just a club for a nautic music. Proceed with the club. As much as I don't want to upset Zuna, I really do want to see how the club uh, the club turns out in there. It wouldn't work without the lab, but do what you have to do to keep the club alive. Proceed with both. So interesting that they allow you to choose how that goes. Um, as desperate as I am to see the club and continue my what is sure to be blossoming relationship with Egghead, you should probably go. You should probably take all of your drug equipment and get out of here. But then they just they just take all of their drug equipment and they're gonna be someone else's problem down the line. I could tell them to report to Precinct 41. And if they don't report, they become fugitives. But they're just kids. They're just good kids. Who believe in the power of love and music. So I don't know. I don't know if I have the heart to arrest them. Especially not while they're wearing those boots. So the easiest path seems to just tell them to get lost. Oh no, he's going to offer a chance to be your own boss in his multi-level marketing scheme, offering to sell customer-made glass tubes. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. It's step three of the church club. It's not a pyramid scheme. It's a triangular uh, marketing. Um, how do I say this? I don't know. I don't 
really want to create a confrontation with Suna. And to be honest, I'm very interested in the Pale, and I don't want her to have to, like, give up. Give up on the project, which it seems more likely she would have to do if we proceed with the club, but I do really like this option that I just confiscate their drug materials, and you continue with the club. Clean and easy. It's all going to work out. I believe in you. I, I genuinely don't feel as though I can't arrest them. Who the f*** would you be to arrest anyone? <laughs> That's a very good question. I have crashed a car. I might be a murderer. I've trashed a hostile room. Alright, get lost. I do want to see you again. This isn't true, what I'm about to say, but I'm like, homeward bounding you, or something. I forget. I forget the movies where they, where they do that. I don't love you anymore! Go on! Be free. So go on, get lost. I don't love you anymore. No, please. Egghead presses stop on the tape player. In the silence, you can hear the wind howl inside his heart, and also outside the tent. There needs to be a club for anodic music in there. Everyone hates each other. Everybody hates it here. It's all just drugs, and we're slaves, and I can't. We are running out of time! Without his smile, Egghead looks heartbroken and older than you thought he was. He looks almost as old as you. We need a win! I promise this will be a win! We won't cook speed in there, we'll do it clean. We'll do it true, we'll do it sober and real and beautiful. This will be a victory for the light! Oh my god, he's... He's so genuinely passionate, and I don't want to... I don't want to disappoint him. I don't want to disappoint this little cutie. That speech was beautiful. I think I've changed my mind. But you, you have to do it clean. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep all these drugs for myself, alright? Thank you. The young man goes like he's trying not to cry. Oh. <laughs> Poor Egghead. So no speed lab, just a club for anodic music. But you have to stay here until after Suna finishes her scientific inquiry. And I don't know if that's going to be an option. I don't know if by doing this I've sided with the teens. Or the, I guess, 40-year-old teens. And, and we'll have to, like, do something to Suna? I'm not going to do that. I, I need to know the answers to the questions she's asking. So we're right back in it. We're, we're right back on the fence. And my little Tukus is filled with splinters. Ah, let's do this clean. Just a club for the music. Yeah! The young man's smile widens to inhuman proportions. His teeth beam in the I floodlight. The would-be leader drops his spiked head between it's his knees. It's impossible now. No, Andre, it's harder now. This hard cop has come to show us how much the fish is, and the fish is always so much more. We all know there was never going to be a club for anodic music with the speed lab. Now it has a fighting chance. Uh, what's that about a fish? There needs to be a club for anodic music in there. Needs to. So we won't cook speed in there. We'll do it clean. We'll do it true. We'll do it sober and real and beautiful. All right. Let's call this incident crime prevention, but I have my eye on you. Just okay. the one. We'll try to do it without the drugs. He raises his head from between his knees. Thank goodness. I didn't know where that was going exactly. Was we'll a do scared. a straight club up in there, spinning the maddest reels, and nothing but, I swear to God, Okay, Egg? Swear to me! From here on, it'll be straight all the way! Um... Alright, that's all. You boys be good. I'd pat you on the head, but I don't want to, like, impale my palm. Goodbye, officer. <sighs> I don't... I don't... I, I'm, I'm so scared. As long as they can remain in the tent for... Maybe like another month while Suna finishes her research. We're, we're all good and fine, but the sale is out here freezing, 
freezing her little took us off. Again. I'm not happy about that either. I need to go find her a hat. So your associates tried to use me to set up a drug lab. Did you know of this plan? I'm not guessing you knew of this plan, but but did you? I did, and I'm sorry. For what it's worth. Oh, that's fine. Which isn't much. That's worth this is why I didn't go into the tent. Typical delinquency. Ugh, those juvenile delinquents. You don't get to choose your posse, they choose you. Mine are idiots, but they're mine. I tried to talk Andre out of it. I even tried not to lie to you. Yeah, I know. Indeed. I know you do. She merely tried to omit the truth instead. Um... I don't care, I'm loco. I just wanted you to know that I know about the plan. I don't... I don't want to blame her for any of this. It's fine. We've all been swept up with our spiky-haired uh, German friends into some sort of drug scheme. It happens to the best of us. But uh, I don't... I'm not... I'm not trying to be loco. That doesn't seem like the message I'm trying to get across. But this seems scolding, which is not what I'm going for. Okay. Uh, I just wanted you to know that I know. That's okay, fine. but I still regret it. I should have been able to control them, and I will in the future. I promise. Just as soon as you finish your hypnotic tapes? May I ask, what did you tell them? Do what you will with your dance club, but just no drug labs, please. Thank you. I'll get them under wraps, I promise. I believe in you. I still don't know um, what we would do with this. Like, are we are we taking the tape recorder from her? Because doesn't she need that for her tapes? But is it is it something that I will be able to use to unlock secrets? Because that's very important to me as well. The secrets. Let's give it a Hello try. again. The device is still warm from her touch and heavy as a brick from the batteries inside. The company logo, Omicron, adorns its yellow plastic cover. Inside, the tape is rolling. The girl looks at the device in your hands. Oh, this is very nice. I'm sorry you have to sit here on the ice, feeling miserable. At your age, or at any age, in this weather, waiting for it to get dark. She looks you in the eye, her pupils wide. Surrounded by a ridiculous amount of makeup. The people who built this world intended it to be better for you, but they failed. It is easier to live in their failure with this by your side. Tap on the tape recorder. The wind howls. She remains silent. It's real. Tell her. It is not a childish fantasy. It can be a real weapon against what's coming for you now. What is? The dark. I know. I'll stick to it. <sighs> so thanks, I guess, for the psych session. Maybe I can return it. What's been eating you, officer? Oh, there's, there's nothing eating me. Just the vast expanse of empty blackness that's consuming the entire world, isolating us more than ever before, and also seems to have crept into my own brain and consumed my memories, taking away uh, both the good and the bad from my life, leaving me unsure if I am either of those things. Nothing. Nothing eating me. Come on, I can tell. But, okay. Be a boy dare about it if you want to. I guess <sighs> there's something that's that's been making my life what hell. Ah, uh, the plight of the working class. Everyone's just mooching off the entrepreneurial class, shackling the doers. <laughs> I think it's all these, you know, foreign people taking our jobs. People just keep putting their selfish interests ahead of the greater good. That's probably the most honest. Regardless of class structure, you're all being selfish. 
Not you, Asel. You're a good egg. Oh, really? <laughs> Now's your big chance, Kras Mazov. You want to enact communism, you gotta be for the working class. But there I go again, being some sort of timid little centrist. Yeah. No one understands that sometimes you've got to make sacrifices for the sake of progress. It's all very distressing. So, the thing that's been eating you is the slow pace of social progress? No, that's probably not it, is it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Now, I had some questions about something else entirely, but moving on. But don't get me wrong, I'm all for slow and steady social progress. I just wish people would be a little more reasonable, is all. In which way? That's a very vague statement. That's probably not it. No, it? it sounds like you just got chick issues. <laughs> well, now that you mention it, I found these letters I'd thrown in the trash. They, they might have something to do with it. Okay. Why'd you think that? Well, they had just the faintest scent of chewing gum on them. I could still smell it under the, um... How do I say this? Uh, the shit. They were written in a woman's hand, and oh boy, did reading them make me not feel good. <laughs> That's one way to describe it. Oh, to hell with this. Questions. I had them. I knew. With the answers. Um... Let's go the apricot scented chewing gum. Well, out. man, that's pretty symbolic, don't you think? Yes, I found it to be very symbolic too, though I can't remember why. Okay, what else? Well, they were written in a woman's hand, and reading them did not make me feel. There good. you have it then, chick trouble. Not political after all. Who was she? I can't remember. Really? You seem to be pretty upset about this, Chica. Are you sure you don't remember anything about her? I remember the scent of her gum, but that seems to be about it. Wow, man. That's some pretty strange shit. Are you sure the letters were for you? Um, yeah. Why would I have reacted so strongly otherwise? How come you don't remember, though? Is it like some... Selective memory thing. It's more of a, a generalized memory thing. I think it's more about me getting so unbelievably drunk I completely erased all memory of this world. You might have a point there, selective memory. But what do you mean by selective Man, memory? When I get hurt, I just want to forget that shit, you know? That kind of selective memory. Yeah. You might have a point yeah. there. Or it might just be some psych bullshit, you know? Königstein Wank. Oh, tell me more about this Königstein Wank. You know, the psych thing they've got going on there. Rich people like it. People in Königstein are mostly rich. I, I want this to be playful. I hope she she accepts it as playful and not that I'm like, oh, you're bullshit. Because she said, she said it. Thank you. You're welcome. Might be for the best to keep that shit forgotten, though. Just my opinion. If it itches, don't scratch. But how will it ever heal if I don't scratch? All right, SL, I'm going to go find you uh, a tent and some boots and a sleeping bag and some warm hats, and I'll be back. I love you. All right, now i got to go talk to Suna and be like, I... I sided with the rowdy teens, but hear me out. I'm, I'm not kicking you out. I will raise no hand against you. And and the hands I will raise are to further your scientific progress. And that of the working class. Hey, Suna. Yes, what is it? The sooner we get this conversation over with, the better. Um... What if I just force you to leave? I'm a police officer. You have to do what I say. Nope. What if you didn't have to leave? I talked to Andre, and he wants to make it work. I don't want to make anything work. Yeah, that's fair. All right. I got your message. But in the interest of further conversation, you don't you don't want to make any anything work? 
not even like a potential future with me. I'm just saying it's on the table. Yes, anything. I don't want to make anything work. Oh, the scent of apricot. It fills my lungs, and I am so sad. But that's fine. You don't owe me. It's anything. not the anodic dance music that's made her bitter. It's the failure of Fortress Accident. Don't bring it up. <laughs> Are you bitter? I would really find a way to reword that. Are you bitter because your radio game project failed? Poking the bear over here, but sure. That's right. If we couldn't get our Welkins to happen, I don't want anything to happen. Ever again. Well, that seems a little defeatist. There's not a trace of irony in her voice. She means it. She means to be defeatist. Convince her to cooperate with the Ravers. I have a very high chance of success. You're not going to believe my chances of success right now. Mostly because I heard Egghead's speech and it was very inspiring. Um, interesting that my conversation with the Dice Maker also applies here, like halfway across the city. I'm, sh I'm sure it... It will work, but I'm so scared. I'm so scared. I'm gonna quick save it. Yes, what is it? Hey, I've got a 97% chance suggestion for you. Just tell her about Egget's defense speech. Listen, about that nightclub. Do you believe in love? Do you believe in music? Then you must believe in this club and help me with the juvenile delinquency. I already told you, I'm not interested. Those kids out there, they're cold. They're uh, probably going to start taking drugs now that their plan failed. And they really need a win. We all do. So you got to give this club a chance. Give them a chance. Maybe they can write music for your radio programs. Hmm? A chance to cook some speed, you mean? She asks sourly. Crossing her arms. After your lips stop puckering, you respond. They promised they'll do it clean, and I kind of believe them. This is Martin Hayes. What can you expect? They're the product of their surroundings. They did promise they'd do it huh. clean. Did they? All right. This is all very good and sad, but I have my research to finish. Trust me, this is far more important than the fate of some local speed freaks and their dance music. I don't know if that's true. I think it's all connected. And the fate of some local speed freaks and their dance music might really help you. If you just uh, just accept it. And accept help from others. Wait. She doesn't want to share the space with them. Help her finish the research. Then she won't have to. Offer to help. Thanks, suggestion. So what if I, <laughs> genius radio computer programmer that I am, helped you finish your project? You said it's not going very well. You could leave when it's finished, and then they could come she in. She thinks about it. A glossy look in her eyes. A gust of wind brings more snow in from the broken gallery. It touches her hair. All right. Bring me the game's off-site copy from my old workspace, if you really want to help. It's stored on a filament memory, and I'm unable to go and fetch it myself. Oh, sure. I'd be happy to. Um, what's an off-site copy? It's a backup of my former employer's project. The radio game we were working on. It's stored on a filament memory, just like the one inside this radio computer. She points to the glowing cube inside the, the machine. The backup itself is destroyed now, but I'm hoping to use what's left of it to pinpoint the exact location of the anomaly. You just have to go to my old workspace and get the filament. Hold on. If it's called an off-site copy, then why is it still on site? Hold on. If it's called a... Oh you, you God, get it. You not get the this gist. again. It is not on site. It is in the basement. Perfectly safe and not connected to the front at all. Basement? Sounds like it's technically still on site. <laughs> and technically is the most important and thing no. of all. Taking it outside the building wouldn't have protected it from the data loss. There's nothing wrong with keeping the backup in the basement. What happened was a freak accident that has nothing to do with how the backup was stored. We clear? 
She stares at you with pleading and furious this eyes. This is clearly a painful topic for her. She must have had to explain herself numerous times. No, I, I don't... I don't blame you at all for the data loss, and I, you're, you're in no danger of being fired from me, and I love you, Suna, and I would be happy to go get your off-site copy. Uh, the doomed commercial area, yeah, right? that's the one. You can get in through the bookshop. You just have to do some explaining to the bookstore lady. You mean plaisance? I've actually already been inside. Good. Then you might know the giant ice bear fridge in the building's cellar. The filament is inside the fridge. Just go and get it. Hmm. Um. Didn't she? Didn't she just tell me? Where exactly is the offsite copy? Maybe I need the filament first, and then I like download the offsite copy, and they're two different things. And I'm a I'm a simpleton. In the giant ice bear fridge. Nope, I, I was right the first you. time. It has red glowing <laughs> eyes. It's impossible to miss. You just need to get the offsite copy from the ice bear. All right, I'll go look for it. It would be my nice. privilege. She thinks for a moment and then reaches behind the radio computer and hands you what looks like an oversized pry bar. And here's my false old multi-tool. You might need it to hack loose some ice. It opens everything. If you get me the offside copy, then you can keep the false old. Deal. It for her to say this. She's not too happy to be parting with the Kaval soon. Aww. Take it if it's sentimentally important to you. I will be right back. One second. risk of becoming deliriously uncaffeinated. All right. Uh, I'll leave you to work in peace. I'll be right back. Hey, about the off-site copy you asked me to bring. I've done nothing. You literally saw me stand here for about 20, 25 seconds. So I'm gonna go get it now. Uh, bye. All right. So I have a Kvalsund pry bar now. Good for me. I have not done anything to ungray my uh, encyclopedia check on the stained glass window, though I'm looking forward to it. And I also still have the re-piece it together with visual calculus. We'll do that perhaps when we return. Uh, question is, can I fast travel from the church? Is that an option? To the Martinez waterfront. Seemingly not from the interior of the church. Let's try outside. All right. Travel to the Martinez waterfront. This is what I desire. Does that uh, take time? I'm assuming that it does, and it's already getting a little late in the day. But if worse comes to worse, we can uh, give it to her tomorrow. Kim has to leave us. Didn't seem to take any time. All right, that is some, some quick, fast travel. Thank you. Quick save it here. Leap into the bookshop. Actually, can I just, since I opened this door once, can I go back down in here now? Hooray! Straight to the ice bear fridge. Was there ice on this, like, ice cream maker, too? Seemingly not. Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Mm, 
I still don't know what I need to do with those exactly, but I'm not going to mess with it for now. Some coinage back here I missed. Cellar window. People's feet shuffling by on the street. Alright, get out of here, Quentin Tarantino. God. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too... I don't think there's anything new about that. Let us whip out the Qualsant. I will save it first, just in case whipping out the Qualsant hurts me deeply. Pry bar. Yoink. Still bag in hand it. The beer's eyes are still glowing red, me. watching over all the ice cream wrappers hidden inside its belly. Nom nom nom. Ice cream in my belly. But where's the filament memory? It's not here. Hmm. I can't see the offside copy anywhere. Check again. Really rummage. Someone must have taken it. What does the note say? There's a note? Which note? Did I pick up a note when I looked in here earlier? Hmm, potent pills now. Gotta remember to give that back to Idiot Doom Spiral. Oh, this is this is the Qualsant. Multi tool. <laughs> I don't know why I thought they said pry bar. Maybe they're both pry bars, but this one's just better. A pry bar plus two, if you will. The number of gadgets hidden within the frame of the yellow and grey multi-tool will stagger any technician. Okay, uh, did we get a note? Oh, this grouse is looking pretty rough. Handwritten note from the fridge. The note Here we go. Is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. Does it say anything interesting? This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Read the Someone note. Someone has scribbled. S. I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I had to hide it somewhere safe. You'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Sully Swaff. Huh. Who's the illiterate ginger kid? I can't... Mm, I can't go... I can't put my finger on it. <laughs> it's not a very... Generous description of Kuno, but it's also the most generous description I could picture for Kuno. Do you have any idea what the frozen ice cream maker could be? We just walked past it. Who? Sulislav. Sulislav. Wasn't he one of Miss Lucan and Kilda's co workers? I remember coming across this name when we were reading her personal log. Uh, I'm just gonna ask this, even though it makes me look foolish. I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. Oh, thank you. I just saw the... You have to be outside the church. I appreciate Didn't that. Didn't you see one right next to the breaker box? You know, you know, I sure did. I put the note away now. And also the pry bar. And instead... Pry bar plus two. Oh, that is huge. Got a real, like... Kingdom Hearts thing going on now. I like it. Alright. I was not expecting uh, the multi-tool to be this big. It's apparently not a way to go. I'll go around. It's fine. I'm not angry. All right, this orange machine is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. Oof. Three percent. My physical instrument is not in tune. Uh, turn the crank? Lieutenant Kim, do you want to get over here and help me help me crank one out, or...? Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. 
In the distance, you hear water dripping. It's all gone now. You'll never become a poet or an entrepreneur. You're right there, but let's not dwell on it. Ah, uh, so I need to be much, much stronger to crack crack open the lid. Or maybe I need to f fiddle with this business and, like, thaw it out first? Two cables are plugged Seems into like... the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. I don't know if it's not on now, if it's plugged in. It may make sense to unplug it so that it can thaw. But I'm not sure. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Very, very smart. smart. Opening the lid should be much easier if the ice cream maker has defrosted. Oh, it's gotten janky. One second. Let's see if that fixes things. Alright, uh, cool. It's defrosting now. We probably have to wait for some time, I assume. This orange machine is dead still. It has a hand-cranked ice cream churner and an electric freezer. The ice around it slowly melting. It's not giving us like a time passed bonus, but maybe one will appear or just the machine unplugged bonus will increase with time. I don't quite know. Either way, we know where it is safe and sound, and I have very little chance of getting to it now, regardless. So, I've got, oh, just tons of skill points. Like, I could throw one into physical instrument since it's so desperately low. And I could also throw one into encyclopedia to unlock that other check. But we don't necessarily have to make that decision now. Where else do we have unpassed checks? Pile of clothes. Sleeping dock worker. Kind of seems to be like in the hostel. I don't remember seeing that one. Electronic doorbell. A volition check. It's kind of a legendary trash container. Trying to have empathy for Kuno. It's very hard. So we got a ton of them in this immediate area. Backyard wall. While we're in the doomed commercial area, let me race upstairs for a moment. See if we can suss out this map wall. Entirely sure if it doesn't like remember. Um, I need a flashlight. Remember ones you've passed on that same list? But I wouldn't assume so. All right, save it up here. This old yeah. fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red. A diagram for summoning some. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic. It's this one. Your flashlight slides over an old... Some of the writing has faded with age, but... Nope. <laughs> so where is the map wall if it's not either of these? Tiles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. I don't think we necessarily need to get anything from here for Suna, but can we use the same password we used for the other machine? The speaker comes to life. Good afternoon, Sartre. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? Um, try the password for the production Good. schedule. Please repeat the password. After life death? Could be a different password. But let's Good. try it. I've unlocked the Sweet. production schedule. After ending the call, please press print to access the filament. Really? She just used the same password? 
Maybe those radio computer guys aren't that paranoid after all. The lieutenant seems almost disappointed Fox to discover this. Accident. Is there anything else I can do for you today? Not right now, my love. Thank you for your time. Bye. Thank you, and goodbye. Tiles on the cube are still smoldering. With a quiet determination, the printer starts printing. A piece of paper unfolding like a handheld fan. It's a project report written by the lead producer, Andrew Andy Schott, about Whirl Untethered, a radio game developed by Studio Fortress Accident. The first few pages give an overview of the capital and workforce, while the rest of it seems to be a production schedule. Hmm. Read about the capital. I want to know about money, baby. Read about the workforce. Who worked there? How long? Skim through the production schedule, whatever it is. Tear off the printout and throw it away. <laughs> it's all this trouble. Read about the workforce. Fortress Accident employed 18 people. The bulk of the team composed of writers and concept artists. There were also radio programmers, sound engineers, a CEO, two marketing experts, and a single overburdened producer who developed a habit of popping Parolidon in the basement to escape his obligations. It's definitely not a small uh, meta-commentary on game production. No, I'm sure. It's, not, it's a coincidence. Why did Fortress Accident have so many concept artists? Why did a radio game need so many artists? It didn't. Didn't need so many concept no, artists? definitely not. A few more producers could have come in handy, though, especially when dealing with writers, some of whom routinely skip to work because of mental health issues and extremely unprofessional sleep schedules. Oh, that sounds like One writers. One of them even managed to steal some valuable company property before skipping town for good. Uh, I'm not really curious about the money, but sure, t tell me about in the money. In its short time of existence, Fortress Accident SCA managed to burn through truly insane amounts of money. The first tranche of seed financing brought in 150,000 Ria, but then came the delays. Eventually, the damage reached 400,000 Ria, with only half of the game finished. Where'd they get all this Let's money? Let's just say it was a real adventure for their Egaunian investor. Uh, skim through. The production schedule depicts their glorious descent into bankruptcy. What happened? It was impossible not to fail. The project was too large, and no amount of money could satiate the ever-expanding ambitions of the development team. They tried to make a four million real game with 400,000 in their bank account. They thought they could bridge the gap with pure willpower and imagination. They couldn't. I could have bridged that gap. What? <laughs> How? Ah, so they were done in by their own ambition. No. Even then, success remained within an ever-narrowing margin of possibility that, despite everything, never entirely disappeared. That is, until they discovered the Valley of the Heads. The what? At the eleventh hour, the lead designer, Jimsk-born Suliswaf Jalisa, decided that what Wirral Untethered needed was a secret mystical location at the extreme edge of the map. <sighs> I'm... I'm so excited by these words, but... Go on. Sorry this to place was to be the Valley of the Heads, where the heads of all the headless constructs could be found. The player would have been able to choose a head for their headless party member, and each head would have been voiced on air by a professional actor. How many heads were there? So many. The last count, there were approximately 10,000 heads for 10,000 headless men, all of which could be endlessly recombined. That's a lot of combinations. Uh, Kim, help me out Do here. you really want to know? This seems to be a calculation here, but it may take a while. Yeah. How, how bad could it be? Huh. <laughs> 
Oh, we're getting there. Uh-oh. Keep going. The lieutenant taps his foot impatiently, his arms folded tight <laughs> against his chest. Give me a minute, Kim. We'll get, we'll get back to the murder. I'm just really curious. What have I done? Keep going. What if you broke the radio computer? What if it's never going to stop? Please stop. Just let the numbers wash over you. Enjoy the gentle white noise. And that's it. And that's it. <laughs> there are a lot of combinations of heads. Okay, so that's what did well, the man? yeah, that and the catastrophic data loss. This must be the anomaly Suna mentioned in the church On log. the nature of the data loss, there's ominously little information in the production log. It comes at the very end, where things get fuzzy and dark, where tables and numbers seem to vanish into an eerie nothingness, before the Egaunian investors pulled the plug. What is clear is that one day, an unidentified numeric anomaly occurred on the East Insulindian Lintel Front, just as the World Untethered Project was being compiled that day. That is an unbelievable coincidence. That it would happen exactly as the project was being compiled. In fact, I don't believe that's a coincidence. Uh, and the anomaly then caused all the data to get lost when in the air? When the project air? was returned, it was completely blank. Frickin' shame, The team that. spent weeks on the phone with Lintel, the service provider. But despite their diagnostics, they could never produce a satisfactory explanation or pay for the loss. They lost the whole game and wouldn't even pay for it? Wasn't there a copy of the game, a backup? I think that's what, what we're after, yes. Mysteriously enough, it seems that the off-site copy happened to be on-site when the catastrophic data loss occurred. It was the lead programmer's responsibility to oversee weekly maintenance of the off-site copy and, well, keep it off-site. An explanatory note from the lead programmer has been attached. Take me thanks. S. Lukin and Kilda, the lead programmer of Fortress Accident. The off-site copy was on-site because there was no off-site anymore. Not for me. Not after eight months of crunch. Ouch. I didn't have a home anymore. So I started keeping it in the basement, in the ice bear refrigerator, near where I went to sleep. It was perfectly safe there. The temperature conditions were optimal. That seems like a perfectly reasonable explanation, really. I mean... That's not what her colleagues thought. Is there anything else from this lead program? The production schedule ends with a few random notes that seem to be added sometime later. Read those notes. Four months later by an unknown author. I am the only one left, and it's gotten rather damp here. A few other businesses have gone under, too. Slipstream switched to making skis, and the hairdressers just left, cursing Martinez. They're right, though. Something's seriously wrong with this place. Martinez. All of it. Gripped. With a slowly seeping entropy from within. Still haven't got an answer from Lintel about what happened. All I could get were the physical coordinates of the error on the East Insulindian front on that day. Since the computation happened on air, I reckoned it had to coincide with an actually existing location. I have compared the coordinates to a map of Revachol West. Turns out it's only 800 meters from here. The address is Saint Brune 1147. I am going there to look this thing in the eye. Gonna look this thing right in the Saint steeple. Brune 1147. That's what the street sign next to the church said. I don't want to just throw it away. Can we tear off the printout and keep it in case? What if I need all those numbers I printed? And also, I'm really sorry to your paper and ink stores. Piles on the cube are still smoldering, casting the framework in a soft glow. Fluorescent play and print keys shine on the keyboard. 
All right. So, uh, th this map wall, this rumored distant map wall of ours, it seems to be in the doomed commercial area. Is there any other information? Nope. No, there sure isn't. All right. Just gonna keep looking around then. Is this Emma's Atelier? No, don't, don't use it. I just thought you might want to look at it real quick, but don't, don't use it again. of the 24-hour window repair shop. I'm sure my physical uh, health has not increased. It smells like leather and sweat and sweaty leather and leathery sweat. The barbell waits patiently on the floor like a dog for... Still 8%. I'm, I'm good. I'm good, thanks. I don't want to tear out my coccyx right now. Maybe later. Whoop. There's genuinely no idea where the map wall would be. Maybe it's talking about the bookstore map wall? That might be what I'm thinking of. It finally came back to me from the depths. I do want to see if she has any new dialogue. Oh, it's you After again. Speaking with Suna? Are you looking for a die? Mm, not really. I do have a little bit more loose spending money for the purchase of dice. Since I'm now sleeping in a shack. Return later. Okay, so let's check the bookstore. Ooh. Sorry, Plaisance, I've decided to blind you with my pepper spray. bag back before we get to a new area with new bottles I several maps the map have wall. been attached to a bullet right. the maps look old and faded your eye catches a map of Insulinda a map of Revachol and a map this large map Ozon Laurent disintegrating in, in the northeast a dust mite stands on a north coast you can lost 850 the ocean break connections you have little perhaps they are got the north coast to the east we definitely Kudo. read these it's so prior no just looking for if this is a... somewhere to be this is all you have skill check sorry, attached sir, which there doesn't really valuable. seem to be Though they might not look it the map of martinez is 90 cents though you seem to underestimate my resources yes, madam yes. are you interested or not i i I might be. I don't have the dialogue option for it, though. Okay. So maybe that's an indication that already past skill checks may show up on the map? There didn't seem to be anything there. Should have been an interfacing check. So I am not quite sure. Still need a new point of composure before I can try that one again. Weird. Several maps have been the maps only look list old and faded. That are still Your eye available. catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, the north coast to the east. Hudon. It's so small. You no, this is somewhere to be. Hmm. Okay. We'll 
figure it out later. So, if I need to wait for the ice cream maker to continue to thaw, overnight would probably be a good shot at it. Uh, once it reach, reaches, rather, 2100 hours, we may be able to try to get into that upper balcony door. There was a skill check. An old East Delta Commerce Center. This must be the name of the Dune Slipstream. Still not incredibly great odds. We could run the old the old three attempts on it real quick. And then move on. An old East Delta Commerce Center. This must whatever she says, it can't hurt you. Yeah. You're a different person now. Stronger, healthier, and alright. Maybe not healthier, but it's a bonus that you've drunk so hard you can't remember any of your past relationships. Oblivion's the ace in your corner. Alright. Call her again. Someone who seems to know me and is speaking mysteriously on the other end of this slipstream There's line. There's a light buzz as you press the doorbell, waiting for her to answer the call. It's cold outside, and you can hear the wind blowing into the speaker. There's the static again, whispering like a seashell pressed against the air. Have you come to place an order? It's the same voice you heard before. Uh, hi. It's me again. I wanted to talk to you. My God. Here come the bad vibes again. Relax. Distance yourself from it. Hmm. I don't know what I would explain, as I can't remember, but that seems to be the nicer option than just to call her and be like, Hi, I wanted to talk to you. My god, what? It seems like a weird response, but uh, uh, what? It is you. It sounds like pretty much the exact same thing she said last time. In recorded voice. My god, I didn't think I would hear your voice again. Wait, is she... Are you repeating your words? Michelle, just please. Even her breathing, the way her voice drops when she finishes the sentence sounds exactly the same. Why did you even call? I don't understand. You've been gone for months. I thought you didn't care. Is this some kind of joke? It doesn't matter what I say, you're just going to continue, The voice right? from the intercom doesn't answer, but you can hear her breathing. Wind blows into your microphone again, crackling and echoing in the box. Is it over? Can we talk now? Ever since I came to work here, it's been as if... As if my mind has been wiped clean. Say nothing. It's so nice. be able to finally forget about you. And then it hits you. You're a recording. She tries again not to cry and still doesn't succeed completely. Her quiet sobs sound old and distant as if her voice is being played off a wax cylinder. Real or not, your mirror neurons react. It feels painful to be listening to this. Why does it still feel like it's my fault? Go on, Anne. Go ahead, rather ancient recording. Cry, then. Just a recording. And here I thought... I would normally do this to feel sorry for myself, but... Oh, my, my morale. So low. Just a recording. Her sound melts into the static from a long-distance phone call. From time to time, you can hear people talking in the distance, but can't make out any words. This is where you hung up the call the last time, but the recording is still going. Keep listening. The phone rings in the office with an old-fashioned chime, and someone walks by in a pair of heels. The static 
is like a warm blanket wrapped around the sounds. Mm, cozy. Is anyone there? No one replies, but the static grows stronger like rainfall. Then a female voice speaks out, completely different from the one before. Glorious and total somehow. Crawling inside your head. Her words are too cold to comprehend. She smells of sodium lights and rain streaks on car windows. Eyes like pilot lights watch your shape in dark hallways, guttering. So... The strange alien thought pattern ends. The lieutenant cuts in, inspecting the intercom. It was a recording trapped in the circuitry from some ancient tenant. This sometimes happens. Shall we conclude here? We have other mysteries to solve. A recording trapped in the circuitry? Didn't something weird just happen to you as well? Did you feel the cold alien fingers inside your flesh meats? Don't take this the wrong way, but during our short stint working together, something weird is almost always happening to you. I know, that's what you love about me, isn't that, that Kim? is true. That is fascinating, and it seems a shame I can't, um, investigate it further. But maybe soon. Maybe soon on the waves. I can hijack Suna's headphones and try to find her again. Okay, it's already saving it, it seems. Now I can go. Thanks. Sorry to interrupt. All right, so we have some time to kill before we need to go to the apartments. Um, out of curiosity, did that remove my... ...entry here? It kind of seems to have... ...from the intercom, so what in the hell is going on with the map wall? That being the case. It's fine, I'm not angry, I'm just... I'm just... Alright, um, other skill checks we could retry. Seems the working class woman is not inspecting the bookstore today. How about this wall? Just an ordinary wall. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Still quite, quite low. Must be another way to get a bonus for this or something. Because it doesn't seem to be like a time based one, like a. Continue to wait and the picture will become clear to you in your mind! Mm. I'm not sure what else we could try. It does seem to have something to do with Cindy. Plus, I wanted to ask, ever since we saw that red paint up near the boardwalk, like the Ferris wheel area. Wanting to speak with Cindy again. Oh, hey, Cindy again. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? I, I sure have. Uh, she won't talk about the murder. But maybe you can tell us something about the murder victim's missing armor. What do I care about some fucking tin eggshells? Isn't armor art? Art for the, um... Body? <laughs> Come on, Cindy, just help me out here. I'll appeal to her artistic Ugh, nature. Alright, sad piggy. I'll give you this one. I saw a little girl in the fishing village running around with military-grade handwear. Look cute as hell. Oh, I'm sure Could she did. Could that girl have been little Lily? It's not a bad place to start. I know a little girl in the village, but for privacy's sake, I probably shouldn't go around telling her name to potentially gang-related strangers. Uh, little it Lily? Been her small kid with giant white armored hands. If you've seen one of them, you've seen them all. All right, catch you later, Cindy Skulls. 
I totally forgot while we were in the main square area right next to Kitsuragi's motor carriage, I need to call in the other body or like call the number on the library card, whatever options it gives me. Let's head back there real quick. There does seem to be another skill check in the backyard that we can test out as well. Effectively now just trying to kill time until the fridge is defrosted, which is nice. Glad we have a moment. Though, to be honest, the whole radio computer thing is just a side quest, and I should, shouldn't be wasting time <laughs> with that as my main priority. I should probably be investigating the whole murder situation. But we'll get back to it. It's fine. Vigilance fun. officer, what can this old carabineer do for you? Check is... 8%. Not great. And my composure is quite low. I understand Jean-Marie meant a lot to you. Jean-Marie? There is nothing for you to understand here. It is not our death you are investigating. That's true. But were the circumstances of her death in any sense unusual? Uh, where was the photo of you two taken? What happened with you, Gaston, and Jean-Marie? All right, let's back up to a less sensitive subject. That's that's probably the right way to go here, but no, I'm going to continue to prod. Were the circumstances of her death unusual? Absolutely not. She died of pneumonia in her bed at the age of 79. This is highly usual. Well, where was that photo of you two taken? Fair Fair, 91, in the Faubourg district. A parade was held to honor Guillaume Lullion's name day and the Carabineers marched in the place of honor. You looked happy in the picture, smiling. This think. was the happiest day of my life. This is said in such a matter-of-fact tone. It leaves no room for doubt. What happened with you three? I was 22 when I returned from King Guillaume's Akira operation in the south and found my sweetheart in the arms of this wretch. The Akira operation? was a seven-year campaign during which suzerain Guillaume's army forcefully united the people in the southeastern part of La Petite Continent, collectively known as the Aikiela tribes under the Revacholian banner. I won her back, but while I was dealing with some issues... You were like a dark cloud sucking the joy out of every living thing around you. And you... you... Hurt her. He quickly glances at you, meaning me, and I, meaning me, hurt her. I didn't. I didn't mean to. Was I wildly drunk at the time? Is this something that happened in the last three days? Dark cloud. That sounds unpleasantly familiar. I. Uh, I. Uh... He looks down at his boots, lips moving, but the words are Who's inaudible. Who's dead and memories are gone? He nods and looks at Rene with something resembling compassion. The old soldier says nothing, but when his glance quickly runs over Gaston's face, there's an odd look in his eyes. Why don't you two just kiss already? I'd love to watch. It is such a pleasure to see you again, officer. How may I head the citizens' militia on this fine day? Uh, let's check for additional questions about Jean-Marie. Sweet, Jean sweet Jenny. Ask away, officer. I knew her all my life. Of course, officer. Nothing new. Memories? Right. Bye for now. I wonder if taking a bite of his sandwich gives me any experience, but I don't steal the old man's sandwich. That seems so rude. To the motor carriage! Quick march! All Inside, right. you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out... This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Please connect me to the Jam Rock Public Library. I'm afraid that closed. It says here that the library is open Aww. from 10am to 6pm. So before 6pm tomorrow, we should call. Fair enough. I guess then we should, we should report again, the body. Anything else, detective? I need to report a dead body. One moment. 
Can you please describe the body, age, sex, cause of death? Unidentified middle-aged man, height 170 to 175 centimeters, dark hair, medium build. Looks like he slipped, fell through a hole in the boardwalk, and hit his head against the metal bench. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him, and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? No, it seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots and little else. <laughs> Sorry, that was inappropriate. Trousers and an old leather jacket with a bright blue lining. I found a library card from his pocket. Any information on the library card? It's from the Central Jamrock Public Library, which I asked you to contact a moment ago, and you were unable to. It belongs to someone named Billy Mejean. Good. You have a lead. It's true. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? We are taking the case, baby. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. Thank you. Though I'm sure the predatory birds of the area will be upset. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? All right. I kind of don't remember. It was so long ago. Like, what the purpose of contacting Sylvie was for? We got that lead from Gart at the at the hostel front desk who said that she, like, used to work there as the bartender and might, might have seen something. And we asked her a couple of questions, but uh, connect me to Sylvie again. Let's refresh Just our memory. Just a second, officer. Ooh. Ah. Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Thank yeah. you. Hello? Hey, Sylvie, it's the police again. Just bothering you for really no oh, reason. Great. What else do you need, detective? And I suppose, um, have you seen my gun? Please, no. Not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, I showed you my gun? When, when did this happen? I'm trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating, and... She stops, hesitantly, not sure if she should continue. And, uh, what d did I do? I can, I can manage to lose one more point of morale, but that is it. That is it. You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It, it got pretty graphic. Oh, those again. I have been trying to wean you off them. Thank you, Drama. I appreciate that. You know, uh, when you what? put your gun, your actual gun, on your temple and pretend to shoot your brains out, off of that, people don't like that. Hmm, I remember this. You were screaming things like, my brains are all over the wall, painting them red. I won't be seeing it, because these are my brains. I can't see without my brains. <laughs> Very nice visuals there. I was, I was in a dark place, but that still doesn't excuse my behavior, and I'd like to apologize, Sylvie. Some poor sod was trying to eat his pudding while you were screaming, spit-flying, imitating the mercy shot right next to him. Spat some in his food. I don't think he touched it after. I should have just... Uh, nope. Why would I threaten to kill myself? I mean, look at this world. I would love to stay. Okay. I, I don't know what to say. Yes, but what uh, what happened to my gun? Let's just get back to the subject at hand. No idea. All I know is next you were waving around money instead, saying things like big bucks cannot lie and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. Hmm. Deep, deep philosophizing I was getting into it there. It almost looked like you pawned it, but believe me, I did not ask. I did in deed pawn it, so uh, thank you, that's all. I think I've got everything I need now. I will never bother you again, Sylvie. Uh... Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I. You hear the call breaking up. Anything else I can help you with, officer? <laughs> all done for now. Thanks, Alice. Over and out.
In the cabin, you see a set of steering. Well, I'm glad that didn't damage my morale, at least. At, in the game. Definitely damaged my morale out here. In the real world. Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. What's on your mind? 72%. This is probably about the time. To look deep into his Stuck eyes. Stuck in the rain longing. in a traffic jam, man. What's on your Ease into it. Oh, come on. I believe in you. I believe you can make it on the second try. Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. Ease into it. I believe you can make it on the third try. This one seems particularly troublesome for some Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. Ease into it. I normally wouldn't try beyond three, but now, I, now it's just a matter of stubbornness. Stuck in the rain in a traffic jam, man. In his eyes, an unfamiliar longing. Flecks of brown and gold. A familiar longing? How? It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest, down the street that goes beyond the horizon. Would you label that as the motorway south, perhaps? What's in the southwest? Excuse me. Uh, really, you can, you can tell me. Hell, I get longing. I'm having some longing right now, just staring at your face. I felt something similar since I woke up. Why not? Yeah, let's be perhaps a little over enthusiastic about it. Hell, I get longing. Sorry, it got crunchy again. All right, uh, here Man. we go. I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. There's no helping in absence, you know. Mm. I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way, waiting all the way in Diora. And here I am stuck in this shit, so far from home. Diora of the Seven Seas. It's on the other end of La Caillou, pretty much. On another island called Laurentide, off mainland. We've got a little place there. Can almost hear my kid laugh when it snows. What's it like to miss someone? What's it like? Good. And bad. An ache that brings you joy. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail of living with them. It comforts me. <sighs> what about you, cop man? You missing someone? Mm, there's the question is of the hour. Is that what it is? This feeling? No. It's scarier than that. You're pursued by a hunter. Smelling of apricots and sorrow, and the past. I miss my gun. Apparently I had a lot of fun showing it off to people. I miss someone, but I don't know who it is. Or no, I feel hunted. That, uh, interjection from Half-Light there is kind of the first time it seems to have taken on that implication. So I don't know that I feel hunted, other than in this exact moment, with my sense of half-light. I do miss someone, but I don't know who I it is. I feel for you, my friend. It's bad enough to know who you miss. Missing like that doesn't feel like it has much of an upside. But, thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone, and I know it wasn't easy to ask. I hope you find your way through your own troubles. Goodbye, you're gorgeous. I mean, I'll talk to you later. Alright. Alright, so. Still have time to kill. Um, check in the backyard. For the backyard wall. Oh yeah, I remember now. I didn't... Um, unlock this door back here because I was waiting to be back in the saddle with Kim. I had threatened to do it without him. I guess we need to go to the back backyard. And not to the front backyard. Okay, fine. Must be a shortcut.
that opens up there eventually, but I haven't found it. So I, I seem to recall uh, wrestling over whether or not we should unlock the door when Kim was here or not. I can't remember if I did, and then I just didn't go inside. Because I was waiting for Kim to be back with me in case we found evidence related to the case. I kind of think that's how it went, but I may just have not unlocked it at all, so let's go check. This is the perfect thing that is sort of more back on our main quest line that will hopefully kill a little time. This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. Press your ear the against door the door. The slick with rain. You don't hear any movement inside. In fact, it's oddly silent in the yard around you. No birds chirp. Well, that's disquieting. Uh, carefully you knock. knock. silently. The upholstery muffles the sound. No response comes from the apartment. I guess no one is in. What is your opinion on this task we're Let's undertaking? This isn't what I joined the RCM for, but every day tells you something new about yourself. Apparently, working with the local union boss to get info on an investigation is not something I'm squeamish about. So you don't mind if I unlock the door? I mind that the local thug is using the RCM for his busy work. But if this gets us to the bottom of this hanging, then I'm willing to look over it. I am right there with you, buddy. I feel the exact the same hand, way. We could just leave and tell Evrat we opened the door. No one seems to be tailing us to see if we actually did it. Lie to Everard? That, that's an option? Yes. Presenting a fabrication is known to get results here and there. You took this task. You make the call. At this point, I don't really care at all about opening the door for Everard. Like, we'll find a way around it. He does seem to be my best lead to f who uh, bought my gun from the pawn shop. And maybe we'll get back on that trail if we help him. I don't want to be seen to be in the pocket of the Union publicly right now. Small break to sneeze, pardon me. But what I want, what I desperately want, is to get inside this apartment and search it for tear. And bottles and uh, loose change. That's, that's my priority in all of this. And if I have to be seen publicly working for the Union... In order to get these bottles, that's just a price the I'm willing to pay. The door is right here. Besides, if you never open it, you're never going to find out what's behind the door. Bingo. You understand me, Inland Empire. Use Manana's key. try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. The sound of the key turning still echoes in the yard. Hopefully no one heard. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Maybe there's treasure in there. A white alligator. A fountain of quicksilver. If there's a white alligator in there, I will be very surprised. Alright, just in case, um, bag in hand. Yay. All right. In we go. What's this? Sweet free magnesium. Small suitcase full of clothes. Guests are staying over? Of it. A book titled The Hidden World of Walking Sticks lies open. You can almost feel the warmth of the red sun on the flag. This is the flag of Rivershaw, the suzerainty. What's with the this sun? This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. Which it's is? an optical, atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. 
happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Revachol got its flag. That must look so strange. I want to see it visually. Beyond just the flag we're looking at. It is but okay. one of the many strange optic atmospheric phenomena of this wondrous archipelago. You're sure you once saw sun dogs in your youth and blue flares. Bow down before the flag. I, that's fine. I'm good. Look, Lieutenant. The mm -hmm. old flag. The tenant is an old-fashioned guy. By old-fashioned, he means very right wing. You don't bow to the flag. The flag doesn't seem to mind. It's just a colorful fabric with a sun sewn onto it. Like all feudal flags, it looks like a children's drawing. Strange how much overlap there is. National flags and children's drawings. An inter dress shirt. That looks like it's cleaner than the one I'm wearing. Let's check. Plus one to logic. Versus... Oh, where's the cursor? Where am I? No, go back. Go, go back, I beg of you. <laughs> keep getting lost. So plus one to conceptualization. I do love my sense of conceptualization, but this unsavory odor, you see. Ugh. So yeah, let's switch to logic. Fancy. Alright. Whoever lives here admires fair-haired fantasy heroes with big muscles. I'm sure they do. A row of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure, a dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols, a broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes, and others. Wait a minute. Tap a on the mugs. Ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. Where have I seen uncomfortable uh, images on the ceramic images betray before? A lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. What do I mean, the uncomfortable? The of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. Mm. Typical this asshole. This person is unhappy. That's a better way the of saying it, probably. The lieutenant picks up one of the mugs, then puts it back down with a look of disdain. So we have a mug in our possession. That we've been all oh, showing all around town, just having a real a real party with, and it was found, if I'm remembering correctly, in the dumpster, with the clothes from the body. So this may be very very much related, but why would one of his mugs from the shelf have ended up in the dumpster? That's not something like a sock on the floor that got swept up in the other clothes and it, it there didn't seem to be any indication when we inspected the mug earlier that it had like blood on it or was used as a weapon for something so like why why is one of his mugs is it a total coincidence and he was just done with that mug maybe he he learned to be more open-minded and just tossed that particular mug away I'm a little confused. I'm beginning to feel better about breaking into this man's apartment. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to high-five me gently? All right, yeah, wh whip out the other mug I have and compare. Yes, your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. The same humor, the same mocking lines. So it's broken. It could be a total coincidence, like he could have broken his mug... Oh well, I'll get another racist mug to replace it, thrown it in the dumpster, and then later someone came and put a bunch of murdered guy's clothes in there. That could be. But it is a connection that we should keep in There's mind. There's the missing tin soldier. Whoever lives here might have used the whirling's container to dump his trash. And it does, like, we learned earlier that the 
the only keys to that particular dumpster belong to the whirling, right? So how would he have gotten access and to And now it? they've drawn the ire of the Union. The plot thickens, as they say. If the Union is going to break this guy's kneecaps, I suddenly feel much, much better about the prospect. I was worried I was going to put someone in the line of danger, but no, he's got a racist mug collection. And his ass. It's fine. Clue. Let's see where this goes. Clues have a way of magically connecting to other clues down the road. I can't wait for them to start connecting. Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. <laughs> Shh. You're not supposed to say that part. Uh, do you really think it's the same person who put the dead man's clothes in the trash? No. I'm not expecting too much from this clothes-in-the-trash lead either way. It might turn out to be some random local matter, but still, a nice coincidence. I couldn't have said it better. Thank you, Lieutenant. You could ask Everard who this person is once you're done here. All right, we'll move on. We'll move on from the mugs, finally. But at least there's a reason I've been carrying that stupid mug around all this time. I'm so glad to put it together with something. The smell of disinfectant in the room. It smells like chemicals. The sort of chemicals you'd pour around the bathroom tiles after shooting a man in the face. One can't help but wonder... All right, we're done here. Let's make Master sure no one's off. investigator, you just can't keep yourself away from locked and hidden places, can you? Yeah, it's my duty as a cop to investigate, but more importantly, I'm just very, very nosy about everything. Hey, I'm not some sort of a, 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 a peeper. No, I am. I am a peeper. Nothing, what do you mean? Nothing. You're right. Get in there. Deep. Invade every personal space. Break every lock. This feels like a sort of foundational moment for the personality I will have going into the future, and I'm a little scared about that. You decided to break into this one apartment. Now you will always crave the rush. I'm just browsing. It's it's fine, right? I'm just, just yes, browsing. That's what it is. A quick peek here. A short glance there. The jam it's all quite shot. delectable. <laughs> I've got to make room for this. Confusing behavior. Research time, one hour, five minutes. By now, it's clear you like to look inside containers. You like to open doors and see what's behind them. Maybe secrets. Maybe more juicy containers. Let's be honest, you like all containers. Trash cans, utensil trays, manholes, coat pockets. Secret containers left behind by the Philippian kings that hold forbidden relics. Okay, you haven't come across one of those yet, but one day... Wait, is that why you're so hell-bent on opening containers? Do you think you'll find the Holy Scepter and the Orb de Montaigne? Yes, I do. I do think I'll find the Holy Scepter one of these days. I, I, need, I need the Jamrock Shuffle. That's important to me. I'm going to go ahead and get that started. It removes my sense of camaraderie with Lieutenant Kim in the police establishment at large, but that's okay. It'll, it'll pass. All right, we're quick saving it. Good to know about the gentleman and his racist mug collection. I can't wait to see the state of his kneecaps two days from now. We could return to Everard and tell him, hey, we did it, give me the info now, you slovenly, um, what's the word? Tart. We probably shouldn't use that kind of language with him, but it's it's an option. It's an option. I can't really think of a better way to spend uh, the next hour or two. So let's race back to Everard while we're sort of on the thread of main quest progress. I'm also 20 minutes past my normal past my normal stop time, but just having a ball. Absolute gas. Did I have any tear to drop off? I kind of think I had 
the majority of across the river's worth, and I haven't been back, so let's... The tear machine here. stands in the... Your bottles clunk into the machine. Ooh, I'm rich. I got a dollar and twenty cents. Okay, up we go. Up we go, I said. Let me pass. Let me pass you fiends. Hey, call me manana. I did that thing. Do you need your key back? All are wondering, man. How can I help you? That weasel I visited. It turns out he has one hell of a colonial mug collection. Yeah, the janitor who gave me the key to his apartment said the guy's a bit of an asshole. I got that impression. Yes, his mug collection certainly represented antiquated social values, to put it mildly. See how we're all busy concentrating on the racist mugs? This is what the ruling class wants. <laughs> a man with such a funny mug collection can't be that bad. All I'm saying is he had a lot of mugs. Yeah, it, it, it represented antiquated social values, and I wish I'd broken the rest of them while like I was I there. Like I said before, I don't know much about this weasel, but the boss man said he's a real piece of work. Thanks for helping out, friend. Mm. I wish I was his beret, and then he'd touch me. Sorry, I got distracted. Do you know anything about the Hardly Los Boys? Los Hardys? They're an independent militant group. A bit too high-strung, but it comes with the responsibility. They're sort of like you. Preserve the rule of law and all that. Except it's Everard's law. But really, they're just like you. That kind of hurts my feelings, but thank you for explaining it. Is he actually it? comparing you? an officer of the law, to some neighborhood vigilantes. I am, at best, a glorified neighborhood vigilante, so don't get your authority in a twist. Come it's on. fine. He's just trying to keep the peace. There's only one law, friend, and that's me. No the man whispers a jaunty tune. A coastal breeze ruffles his hair. I want to ruffle his hair. Sorry, I keep getting distracted. Uh, I, I, good, good talking to you. I gotta go. I mean, I could ask you if you have any idea who killed the hangman. I'm just gonna go talk to Everard. Appreciate you. Let me in. Let me in, I beg you. Mm, smells like somebody's been sitting here recently. Why did you smell it? Giant ass print on the pillow and a pattern of coffee rings on the armrest. Someone is habitually chilling next to the radio. The file cabinet stands steady as ever. The drawer slide. I don't think we need to inspect that note any further now that we found out about the special borscht. The already familiar cold Which touch of plastic a bunch of welcomes vodka you in as you pick up. Everard's office. Wait, there's stuff to look at. I'm, d I'm getting distracted. A composite eye of halogen lights watches you, emitting a low buzz. It's the bees! Not the bees! Ooh, let's see if how many days have passed. I think it's only been like half a day, but let's check. Get back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. It definitely has. Maybe another two, three days that will be within range of possibility. I'll try not to get too excited. Why is this blue? Who blew this? Ultra series gloves. Plus one to half light. For ultimate performance efficiency, use Fallen Ultra series gloves. These come fingerless with a grippy padding covering the palms, making them ideal for quadrupedal movement or for lifting cargo. Why would I be scampering around like a coyote in the darkness? Why would I do that? I mean, now that you've floated the idea, it does sound really fun and great exercise. 
But why? The last now are giving me interfacing, but do do remember that I have a half light option. All right. You okay, buddy? You look somehow meltier than you were yesterday. Oh, hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They can only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. <sighs> I would never tell him to keep his greeting shorter. How dare I? I had some questions for you, if that's not no too much trouble. No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. It's like that old thing. In fact, no goes, trouble at all wisdom because wisdom withers if not shared, and old Leo is always up for sharing. No trouble because I do, in fact, not have any questions for you. So uh, thank you, Leo. I love you. Bye. All right, here we go. Back into the gentleman of leverage against my poor ravished backside. That sinking feeling again in my poor, ravished... Never mind. Hey, Everard. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you've already sat on that chair. Thank you. I appreciate the generosity of that. Um, I did it, Everard. I turned it off. What does that mean? I don't recall what we were talking about, that that might relate to. Um... I guess this is what I'm here for. I opened the door you asked me to. Can we discuss the murder now? I'm very glad to hear that, Harry. One question. Seven you didn't experience. actually happen to stumble in and see what's inside the apartment, did you? Mm, I did. Racist He's mugs. He's trying to figure out if you're lying. There is no way to sway this man in any direction. He is unsuggestible and unswayable. Just tell the truth. These are both true. Though this is a little more straightforward. I, I, I did go inside. And exactly I'll say that. Exactly the kind of fascist memorabilia I was expecting. Weasel probably prays to it every night for the downfall of the Union. He was testing you. And you succeeded. Is there a reward? Are there lollipops? Could I... Could I trouble you for some lollipops? Now let's get down to brass tacks. It's time for men like me and you to figure out who's killed who and why. Real police work is gonna start happening now. I promise you, Harry, this is gonna be good. Alright, I'm, I'm not really at liberty to discuss the details of the case with you as a civilian, but I guess I am also a civilian when it comes right down to it. Uh, there was a collection of colonial mugs, and I found a similar mug in the trash with the hanged man's clothes. What say Racist you? Racist mugs in the trash and in the apartment? You guys are just light years ahead of me. <laughs> Please stop patronizing me, Everard. Tell me what you know. Let's start there. I have so there. much confidence in the ability of your organization. I'm relieved you're doing this and leaving me to do what I do best. Helping people with the power of politics and extortion. Yes, yes. Do you think this weasel is somehow connected to the murder? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't cross paths like that. All I want is for you to succeed in your investigation. I would never complicate things for you. So, so we did a job for you so that you would give us information about the case because you told me, you looked dead in my eyes, and you told me you know exactly who did it. But now that it's time for you to pay up, you don't want to complicate the case for Only, me? it seems to be true. But this weasel might have cleaned up after the killers. Believe hmm? me, Harry, he's a nobody. Just your basement variety nobody. Can't imagine him being connected to a high-caliber case like this. But he does live nearby. Maybe it's a pedantic weasel. Fascists are known to be neat freaks. I feel like a real detective right now, Harry. Am I getting this right? He imitates bashing something with an imaginary baton. Yep, that's that's like 60-75% of, of detecting. You got it. You make a great sergeant. 
So there's more to police work than whacking an imaginary baton. Or say nothing. Don't even give him the satisfaction. I'll stay of quiet. Of course, Harry. Stoic silence. I like that. Very befitting a police officer. I'm not a real detective. You are. That's all he's going to say on this subject. So, I've heard about a connection between the lynching and the strike, and I'd like to hear what By you know now, about it. By now, I'm sure you've figured out who the dead man was working for. The bad guys. Wild pines. Sent to scare us. Another violent measure of the top hats against us flat caps. Harry, this strike is the culmination of many, many mistakes made by the Wild Pines group. They tried to shut the strike down by sending in armed mercenaries. You mean our victim? A security contractor. Can you imagine that? Workers standing in peaceful protest, united in the spirit of fellowship, and they send hired killers to mow us down with machine gun fire. And yet, strangely, only the mercenary ended up getting shot, and everyone else seems fine. I'm talking beasts, hardened killers from proxy wars in Yisut, Seminine, Sadamaritsa. You name it, they've done it. Raping, killing, burning villages, killing little children for the Senorita Pineapple Company, Harry. Remind me not to buy any Senorita Pineapples. Ah, uh, please Everything continue. they did there, they brought over here. They want to turn Revachol into a third world slum. Honestly, the only thing they didn't do is kill the village elephant. You have a village elephant? Where, where are you keeping that? No, Harry, the elephant is metaphorical and so is the village, but the mercs and their brutality are very real. All right, please now, hold. I haven't personally witnessed the brutalities out there. I have the luxury of staying in my container, you see. If I need to go somewhere, they just move my container. Wait, they, they move the container? Nah, not really important. Go on. About Go on. my fun container? It's a hoot, Harry. Who knows? Maybe you'll be in here no, the next time about they the move case. It. it will be very fun. I promise. I don't care about your fun container. I'm just... <sighs> Unless it becomes very relevant to the case. I'm going to start looking around for container tracks everywhere There's I go. There's enough about me and my container. The killers the company hired, I think there were three of them, all hardened commando types. One of them got downright suicidal, getting drunk, violent, a little rapey. Even their own negotiator couldn't control him. That's your boy, the one who likes hanging out and trees. That's in poor taste to say, um... But he seems like a, a right asshole, so By I'll allow negotiator, it. negotiator, you mean Joyce? Harry, what you need to realize is, we dock workers are not pushovers. We got grit, Harry. This whole neighborhood does. Push us hard enough, and we push back. And when we do, we push to kill. Wait, so the whole neighborhood is in on it? But who exactly... The There's pushing. a militant wing inside the Union, a group of people whose duties don't involve manual labor, but peacekeeping in the neighborhood, making sure everything runs smoothly. Hardly. Get it? It was a, that never sounds mind. a bit like organized crime. They're like you guys, idealistic people who want to make sure bad things don't happen, and if they already have, well, punishment must follow. Again. That sounds like organized crime. So these idealists killed our victim? Hmm. One day Titus Hardy, leader of this peacekeeping faction, comes up to me and says, Boss, socialist democratic fervor drove us to take it upon ourselves to kill this beast that was burdening the land. <laughs> it wasn't me, boss. It was the socialist democratic fervor. He probably worded it differently, but that was the idea. Sure sounded to me like they killed him. <laughs> I gave them two weeks paid leave and told them to lay low to avoid retaliation. However, none of them uh, have uh, a gun. Is the problem I'm having with this story. I mean, maybe they have a gun. Maybe they're clenching it between their cheeks and I just need to search deeper and more lovingly. But... I didn't see a gun on any of them, and he turns out to have died, you see, by gunshot. Aren't you so. worried we might arrest them for this? 
Oh, I'm not at all worried about that. These are not the kind of men who get arrested. They're Martin A's boys, tough and gritty. I'd like to see the man who takes them in. Besides, I sent my lawyer girl to look after them. Despite his boastful tone, he's having doubts about something. But what? Maybe he doesn't believe the boys really had it in them. They're his boys, after all. Let's probe that further. I think you're sharing this information with us because you don't think they actually That's did it. That's very clever, Harry. Yes, they might have said it just to impress some girls or something. But Titus has a bad temper, so the chances are 50-50. He thinks it's closer to 60-40. 60, they didn't do it. All right. There was a bullet in the hanged man's head. Is this news to you? So they shot him. He sounds pleasantly surprised. He was Strange. shot in the head before he was hanged. How odd. I don't know what to say, Lieutenant. They told me they hanged him. A hanged man is what I saw when I took a look into that yard. Where did you move your container to take a look into the yard? It's impossible to say if he's telling the truth, sire. What I do know is, the case is in safe hands. If anyone can get to the bottom of this shot and hanged man, it's my two little policemen. Godspeed, policemen. <sighs> Don't like the way you phrased that. All right, how do you know the mercenaries were hired by the shipping how company? How do I know? Let me tell you about these people. That's their M.O. It's what they do. Is your fist okay? In the text it said you slammed it, but it, you seem to be very relaxed in the actual game UI, so I, I Last don't know. Last winter, some poor workers in Terminal E went on a little strike. The company sent in Sediment, a security contractor. The strike was over the workers' right to wear protective footwear, Harry. These guys turn up and start beating people. Tell you what, Harry, I wouldn't be surprised if we got the same mercenary company after a little rebranding. And I'm sure as hell not surprised to see an army of scabs under my gates. They just wanted a little protective footwear. How much did it cost to hire the mercenaries to beat them? You could have just spent on footwear. So you believe the scabs were organized by the security contractor? You said it. Hell, one of those guys looks big enough to take down that proverbial elephant. Boys like that don't just happen to show up during strikes. That does sound quite unlikely, yes. The big guy leading the scabs at the gate is colossal. He's not scared of them. If anything, he likes them being here. Strange. All right. You mentioned a uh, lawyer oh, girl? Liz is a bright one. I paid for that law degree myself, thinking it'll probably turn her all fancy. But hell, Harry, she came back a firebrand socialist. Sometimes she scares me with her zeal. Tell me about Titus Hardley and his crew. Oh, they are simply fine young men. All seven of them. Exemplary union Just members. innocent men. Always working to advance their position in the local socialist democratic movement. Core members. Old Theo used to run them, but things really kicked into gear when Titus took the reins and named the group after himself. <laughs> Gotta love his initiative. Old Theo. Do we know... Interesting. Hey, Theo. Who's second in command? We know Leo. They're almost all of them great guys, born leaders. Whatever happened, I'm sure they only had the best interests of Martin A's and Revachol in mind. Work with them. Hell, interview them. But don't fight them. They really are just like you. Men who like beer, women, and some order on the streets. Clearly you don't know me at all. I like it to be absolute chaos on the streets. Everard, I met these Hardys. Can you ask them to cooperate with me? That would be helpful. I'm worried that by bringing it up, he's going to unspool another giant wallet flap of favors he needs from me. But yeah, but go for it. Of course, it's the least I can do for my good friend Harry. I'll do it right after we've concluded this talk. You'll do it right. After we've concluded this talk. I'll go and tell Titus about this. See what he has to say. Also, Harry, right. here's five real. 
I don't need it. I only wanted you to help me with the Hartley boys. Thank you, no, though. No, I wasn't offering it to you, just holding it out there. But I'm willing to share information. Yeah. Was there anything else? Nope. Bad talk. Good day, Was sir. Was it a good talk? I'm not sure we made much <laughs> headway here. I was hoping we'd bust the case wide open. Heck, I even wanted to tell you what I really want to achieve with the strike. What do you really want to achieve with the strike? I don't know what happened, Harry. I wanted you to feel like Mr. Martin A's. And, of course, I also wanted you to find your gun. But it's like I can't completely trust you. Yeah. Not until I perform another laundry list of favors. I get it. I know how this works yes, now. Yes, Harry. It's like I can't fully trust you if you're not a man of the left. I want to, but I just can't. A man of the left? So you have to be a social democrat? He's been hurt too much in the past by men who aren't social democrats. Ah, <laughs> charm about this. You're right not to trust me. I take care of me. I'm a hustler. I grind. I'm a money engineer. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? I'm more left than you are. This is another corrupt scheme, isn't it? I'm neither left nor right. I do what my heart tells me to do. Um... More left than you? I don't think that's gonna change his mind about anything. And my dialogue choices up till this point have not really done anything to prove that. Oh come on, guys, can't we all just yeah, can't we all just get along? But I'm gonna stick it to him. See what he says. Maybe it'll get a rise You're out of him. Saying it, but I don't believe you. You know how it is, company snitches, agent provocateurs everywhere. I'm barricaded in this fortress of mine, and I need to get a message out. Will you help me? I'm sure that will look good to the community. Yes, I'll, I'll be your little errand boy. And what would this entail? Once again, I require nothing unethical or illegal of you. You just need to get two little signatures on this piece of paper, and then mail it to my accountant in La Delta. Uh, first of all, what are the signatures for? I'm glad you asked, Harry. The Union is going to build a modern youth center in Martin A's. It will be righteous. We're gonna get those teenagers off drugs and on roller skates. <laughs> God, it sounds commendable. Um, okay. There's a nameless little I mean, street on the coast and there's some old houses around it. Most people have already signed. I just need two more signatures to get this mission off the ground, Harry. I... I... I happen to live in one of those shacks now, where you're going to, I guess, demolish and build the youth center, and there's a really cute little girl who's got a really cute little lammy, and there's a nice old washerwoman and, and a couple other kids, and I think you should just leave them the hell alone. I don't... I don't like the sound of this at all. You mean the fishing yes, village? Yes, yes, the little cul-de-sac on the coast, where all the men have drowned in either the sea or the bottle. A gloomy place doesn't have that union attitude. Why don't you just leave them alone? Well, what will happen to the current occupants? They are just going to have to deal with the construction noise for six months, and then they'll be living like kings. Right next to a fancy new youth centre designed by the best architects from Stella Marie. You're not going to evict them, or uh, let, let's say kill them, and dump their bodies into the sea, little lammy floating ownerless on the tides? You sure? You promise? Is he absolutely sure the tenants won't be thrown out in the street? Are you 100% sure no one's going to end up homeless? Am I? Harry, these people, Martin A's is the most important thing in my life. I would never let anything bad happen to them. And so are you 100% sure that no one's going to be We're going to build a youth center there. The value of their properties goes up and kids have a place to play in. I'm looking out for these people, not pulling the rug from under them, Harry. I'm looking out for all of Martinez, not just the harbor. Why don't I believe you at all? I, I don't believe you at all. He means it. <sighs> My sense of empathy tells me to trust you, but... Kim, 
Back me up it depends. Here. I don't think what we just got from Mr. Claire was very useful. It really wasn't. Further favors for this little recompense displease but me. he thinks it's your call. As I said, it weighs on me heavily. But once we get really talking, well, I'm going to hand you the keys to Martin A's and maybe even help you figure out who's behind this killing. He's saying as little as possible, as vaguely as he can, deliberately omitting things. All right, I'm going to I'll ask them. But if they have any qualms, I'm going to burn your container to the ground. You bring joy to my heart, Harry. Such a pleasure to be working with you. Here. He hands you an open white envelope. You lick it. You need to get signatures oh, from Isabel Sadie and Lillian Carter. The cul-de-sac is right past the pawn shop and across the canal. I heard there was some trouble with the water lock, but it should be fixed now. You should be fixed now. For the good of us Once all. Once you have the signatures, mail this to 13022 La Roca in La Delta. Then, I'll know you're a solid socialist. Socialism, you see, is not so much about the dialogue choices you pick, or the thoughts you put in your thought cabinet, or the person you are at heart. No, socialism is all about doing little favors for me. All right, I'm going to lie. I mailed the signatures. <laughs> no. Probably not time for that yet. Um, so let's talk about my lost yes. gun. Your lost gun. My best men are on it. They're turning every stone, searching every playground, asking kids, grandmas, everyone. I know that granny's got my Your gun. Your gun will be found, Harry. Let me assure you of that. It's just a matter of time and effort. Effort on my part to help you with the your favorites. The only way to find it seems to be working with him. He might even be holding your gun hostage. Could he really be holding my gun hostage? Wait, the gun may have been bought from Roy's pawn shop. Have your men factored that in? I will not be blackmailed with this gun business. You know, I don't care about my gun. You can keep it. Does this mean that if I do... things for you, I will give my gun back? Um... This is solid information. Uh, it was bought from the pawn shop. Do you know by... Yes. Thank you for the hot tip regarding your lost gun, Harry. My men have indeed factored in that you pawned it. So condescending, but he manages to hide it. In a way that shouldn't work, but kind of does. Now please, let the professionals do their job. Kick back, Harry, relax. I have great guys on this. You focus on what's important. Building our relationship for the good of Martinez. It did not come as a surprise to him. He might actually not be bullshitting. All right. Does this mean if I do things for you, I'll get my Damn it, Harry. That's exactly what it means. I'm only kidding, of course. It's weird that that completed the track down your gun task. Does that mean there is no other way of getting my gun back other than working with Everard? And he is literally holding it hostage. Okay. Of course. I understand. Good to know. We help you, you help us. Alright. I, I still don't know what this means. I did it, Everard. I turned it off. I'm racking my brains. But I don't know... get back around to talking about Joyce. In fact, I think I'd like to go talk to Joyce next in the sequence here and bring up the whole, did you hire mercenaries? You can tell me we're friends. Did, because one of your mercenaries is dead and I, you might need more mercenaries depending on how this goes. Bye, See Everard. Soon, we'll return and talk to him about Joyce. Around this way. Looks like you should just be able to walk right out of his office. But how foolish I'm being by assuming such. Okay, so we talked to Everard. We broke into the thing. We saw the mug collection. We 
need to talk to Joyce, and now we need to apparently go collect signatures from the waterfront on the other side of the river. I think that was just the container lowering crane control. There's so many C words in there, I'd like to apologize. So we should be fairly clear in the harbor. We got a couple of leads for next time. We have like three things that are winding down. The more time we pass, the likelier they'll be. I probably have like 20 minutes or so left on my jam rock shuffle thoughts. Let's double check. Oh yeah, we're getting there. 23 minutes right now. So I have about an hour until we might be able to go talk to, quote-unquote, Martin, Martin A's. Which is definitely not a false name. Sure. So, I suppose I will leave us here for now, or as we are rapidly approaching three hours. And I have held on to your hearts and minds for far too long. But this is so fascinating. So many delicious little parfait layers of secretive mystery are spooling out of the container cup. And I am slurping it, let me tell you. I am slurping it so hard that the granola might get lodged in places I don't want it to be. It's not a perfect metaphor. Nobody ever said it was a perfect metaphor. I love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with me for a bit. I cannot wait to yank the... Um, computer core out of the ice cream maker next to the giant bear fridge. What a great game this is to develop a sentence like that. And see if we can help our dear friend Suna complete her scientific inquiry into the pale spot within the rafters of the church. That is, at the moment, more important to me than the whole murder investigation. So we'll get back around to that. I will see you soonish. I'm going to go find something to eat. And I will see you tomorrow for another session of Disco Elysium. Lieutenant Kim? Cheek kisses? No, oh, why are you running away from me? Get back here. Get back here for cheek. Lieutenant Kim, you're being very unwieldy. Get you come. You come give me cheek kisses. 